So, hello everyone! Welcome to this thing that we are doing, which is like a Matt and Co. Talk Who, which is something I've not done in a while because YouTube is annoying, so I'm going to try out this new format for it. This is going to be the test run. Saying this out loud makes it sound like I haven't really thought this through, but I have. <laughs> I've just been lazy about it. Anyway, so today... I and a couple of guests are going to be talking about Big Finish, because it is Big Finish month. Um, because a certain someone accidentally leaked it months in advance. I wonder who that is. Hmm, Alex. Hmm. <laughs> uh, don't worry Shit. about it. Anyway, uh, so I might as well just say who the guests are. One of them is Alex Patterson, aka the Doc Two Guide. Hello. Thank you for having me. And another one is someone that we've not actually had at all, or even mentioned. Yeah. Or even have been tangentially related to any of us. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Danny Welch, A.K.A. What? Just introduce yourself, Danny. I'm Type Forty Studios, or I work on another group channel called Time Agents. So, hello, guys. It's great to be in this video, and I love Big Finish, so I'm really excited to do this. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, le these two brilliant, brilliant collectors, who I admire dearly for their collecting efforts, thank you. have, uh, uh, oh, I thank have you. been specially collect- uh, specially collected? No, specially chosen because they are <laughs> big collectors of Big Finish, although Alex being American is all digital, but you see, still, Big Finish. You're a Big Finish fan. Yep. 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 Yeah. yep. So th I, I I've listened to plenty. <laughs> yeah, plenty. Yes, so have I. Uh, I've I've tried getting them all. I'm still d doing that, but I I've made some good progress. I think. Yeah. Um. Or oh, by the way, for all those listening, this is basically just going to be a bunch of tangents. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Yeah. We're just gonna just talk about big finish for like a couple hours. Probably, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, mm. yeah. Um, actually, let's just start off with, like, audios we've been listening to recently. Uh, we might as well go in <laughs> alphabetical order. Alex. Hey. Uh, ah, this name to... comes in handy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, lately I have been enjoying the Dalek Empire series, and, uh, when I say series, it's because I've, I've binge listened to all four of them. And uh, it, it, it was very, a very engaging series. Um, I, uh, I don't think I had found a series qu that quite gripped my attention, a spin-off series that quite gripped my attention in this way, other than maybe Gallifrey, um, like okay. the first series of that I really enjoyed. But Dalek Empire, the first two series, I would say, are uh, like, it's, it's one of those series you listen to it in order the first two seasons are sort of the main story the third season picks up uh from a slightly different setting um that that still relates to series one and two but yeah. not quite as much and then series four is like set in between sort of series one and two so best way to listen to it is in order but it's it's really incredible it, because it has no doctor uh you there's a very realistic element to it yeah where you can relate to the characters like we can watch doctor who come to the end of an episode and we can just you know imagine and hope that one day we'll see a, a police box just materialize around the corner and the doctor will come into our lives and, and change everything but with spin-offs where it's just humans that have to deal with their own problems that feels just automatically more realistic and yeah I just yeah. love the, the series. Um, I think series four is really fun in that it has uh, Noel Clark as the main character. So, okay. like, you, you recognize him instantly, um, but he's very much the action hero. Uh, and they talk about this in the bonus uh, features at the end where he, he actually gets to play the cool Mickey that, you know, we might see at the end of time, but uh, he, he really plays uh, an awesome action hero in that. And then Vicky... Uh, Maureen, uh, Maureen O'Brien, yeah, O'Brien, um, 
plays uh, a general. And at first, I I listened to like maybe two audios before it finally clicked with me that oh, that's that's who she's playing because she's not doing her Vicky voice. She's really yeah. just inhabiting her own voice or that character's voice. And yeah. So you know that series, while it may not be my favorite, it's it's I love those two actors and they they really did cool things with that season. So. I uh, I've been binging those whilst you know doing dishes and cleaning up. Uh, Great way to that's... do big. Listen to Big Finish. Do it well. Oh my less gosh. A menial task that you just you're just bored out of your mind. You'll go insane because of boredom. Big Finish oh, yes. is good to kill the time. Like Absolutely. I've, I've been painting the fence and I've been listening to Big Finish. Um, yeah. Like Perfect. pretty much all of that. And to be honest, if I'm not done, I'll probably listen to like. Rage of the Time Lords, War Master Three, like while I'm yeah. painting the fence, mm. mm-hmm. <laughs> like oh, I'm so excited for that. That comes out tomorrow when we're recording this. So. Does it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah oh, it's God. coming out tomorrow. I pre-ordered it a few days ago when I... it was like three days to go, and I'm like, okay, Derek, <laughs> okay. Yep. <laughs> Have my money. <laughs> oh, Derek yeah. Jacoby is the best, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, I was like, Roger Delgado's the best. Then I, well, it wasn't when I listened to Warmaster 1, it was when I listened to Gallifrey Time War, where I was like, mm. yep, Jacoby, uh, uh-huh, mm. good old Derek, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, I mean, the, after, like, like you said, it's the menial tasks that Big Finish just helps you survive, yeah. which is, is awesome, so I ran out of Dalek Empire, um, and that was really fun. Uh, so I've now been returning to Jago and Lightfoot because yes. I got two of their. I got season two and three on Audible because we had some credits that we like sort of split up, um, okay. and uh, I got those for like a credit each. And uh, I've been really enjoying season series two, um, and I have like four and five, uh, one four and five on the Big Finish website. So that's yeah. what I'm currently binging. They're they're just so much fun, so incredible. Yeah. I really need to get Jago and Lightfoot Series 5. There's just so much to get, you know? Oh, my word. Oh, that's yeah, the yeah. problem. Crazy. Um, yeah. I didn't need the last three Jago and Lightfoot sets. Yeah. Mm. The, the one I am looking forward to listening to, other than Series 5, obviously, is like Series mm. 11, mainly because um, mm. it's just my mission to have every Master Story. Well, it's my mission to get every big Finish story, but the Master mm. Stories in particular, yeah. like... I actually have the 1 to 50s, well, well the two 1 to 50s that have the master in them physically now. Oh, which, nice. yeah, master was. I actually got master off that like Facebook mar- marketplace guy that you recommended, Alex. Nice, nice. My first choice was spare parts, but that was sold that morning. So, <laughs> <laughs> the morning I actually decided to go and, you know, pester him. And I was like, well, my second choice is Master, so yeah. and now I have it. And now it's like being squished in between Flip Flop and Zagreus. Mm. Now, I adore Master because it's such a creepy, unsettling story with quite a very unique twist. But, it, you know, it plays with the whole... Um, the hide? The hide thing? The um, whole hide concept. Yeah. If you don't know what that is, it's you know, wouldn't blame me because it's one of those things that people don't know. But it's quite a very interesting take on the idea, and it's just like very interesting. And there's a very yeah, good a very plot good twist point. at the end, but that's all I'm going to say. But oh. it's very good, very creepy stuff. That one is. Yeah. Fingers that monster. Oh. The. Uh, the Davros, uh, fi- the I Davros series is oh, yeah. spectacular. Oh, that, oh, that's bleak. I love that it's one. It's a masterpiece. Mm. Mm. Or, no, or no, it's, it's a Davros piece. <laughs> <laughs> Davros piece. Yeah, but honestly, um, link, to, link to review in the iCard thing, because uh, Ben did a review of that um, like last year. Oh, okay. But seriously, I Davros. Well, it's Crackle Cram. Just oh my word! One of the best big finished spin-offs ever. Um, no, normally you're apprehensive about like stories about you know a, a big character's past or like you know 
the doctor growing up on Gallifrey or why he left Gallifrey yeah, because you yeah. don't want to like you want it to be done right you don't want it to be done wrong and I Davros was like no we're actually going to take this on and we're going to do it right yeah yeah I could say it's like I like the magician's apprentice and the witch's familiar they sort of made them like you know just a regular little boy who was just scared of what was going to happen and obviously that whole mercy stuff as well but that with I Davros fine. It's just the eyes <laughs> are not. But I Davros. I Davros. Um, mm. Yeah. The I've, eyes have it. I think it. I think I get a bit annoyed by it because, like, even as a child, Davros was really twisted. It's a really twisted child. Yeah. The doctor so, probably mm. didn't know that he wasn't there. He wasn't present during I Davros. Yeah. Oh. So. I would have loved for like a. a of the fourth doctor to just turn up, like arm wrestle him in a canteen without realizing who he is, and then just <laughs> leave again. Just have that little cameo. D during the Scarborough War, he just arrives. Yep. Just, just even in a puts like, the do, whole do, war on pause. <laughs> do, do, do you think the Khalids would have like allowed him through with that scarf? <laughs> like, uh... it, it would have been we're... like. While we're on about, like, Scaro and Daleks and all of that, mm. Alex, I've got a recommendation for you. Have you Ooh. listened to any of the Doctor Who stage play adaptations? No. Okay, oh, well, they have Daleks in them. But the curse of the Daleks is more along the lines of Dalek Empire, where it's like, because it's adapted from a 1960s play that was literally just, like, Okay, so we can't have Doctor Who in this because he's mm. busy like every single week. Right. But right. but we don't use the Daleks every single week, so maybe we could have the Daleks have their own play. Yeah. Which makes a lot of sense. <laughs> but it was written in the 60s, so of course, ludicrous mm. sci fi elements. Um, <laughs> and an uncomfortable amount of sexism. <laughs> Oh god. Oh. Yeah, like Mick Briggs actually like he said in an interview where it was like he said that when the scripts were being handed out he actually personally hand wrote on the front of each one, I'm sorry about this. Cause he wanted to make the he wanted to make the scripts authentic because he was the one adapting them. Yeah. Because he's like if if you remove the if you removed the bits he didn't like, it would be a different play. Yeah, to be honest. Yeah, so it's a period piece. So yeah. Well, I do. I do happen to own all of the stage plays on download, so yeah. I I could actually listen to those. Thank you. The ultimate adventure is interesting because, like, the first the first scene with the Doctor is him and new companion. Like, what's his face? I can't remember his name. I can't remember who he is now. Jason. Jason. Oh yeah, of course. Jason. Yes. The, yep. the French Revolution guy. I um, really want to know who Zog is. <laughs> oh, just, God. just, just like y y you know how you have bars, and then there's like someone to clean up stuff. Mm -hmm. Zog's just that's his job. That, Zog is just such a great sci-fi name. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, like the basically the whole plot for the Doctor starts when he's. Uh, like called by Margaret Thatcher. Oh, oh yeah, and he, I don't think he say something like in it, like as oh god. He's like he says to Jason, out of everyone I've ever encountered, oh yeah, who yeah, travels in time and space. No one scares me more than that woman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, Seven Keys wow. to Doomsday actually feels the most like a proper Doctor Who story for some reason. Okay. It sounds like it should be an episode, you know. <laughs> yeah. Also, the like main planet it's on is called Karn. As you can see, Terrence oh. Dix just do it reuses ideas all the time. Yeah. Like he doesn't have original ideas, and when he does, he just uses them again. <clears throat> time where Exodus. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, Come. Yeah, I like Terrence Dicks, but maybe not his big fan stuff, you know. But there's that's only, 
the only ones I've listened to from him are like the adaptations of the stage plays. Um, do yeah, he did a companion chronicle beyond yeah. the ultimate adventure. Yeah, like the... has he done any more? He did the Sarah Jane comeback. Oh yeah. Yeah, but the beyond the ultimate adventure, like even Big Finish, don't like it. That were taking like the um Mickey out of it at the convention or something. I think I heard someone say. Because mm. not even they like it. I don't know why, but you know. He did the Bernice Summerfield short story, A Mutual Friend. Apparently, that's a that's a short story, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um. Did it appear in like a recent collection? Or yeah, it did. It was Treasury, wasn't it? Um. Which I need to get because of... Rob Sherman's name is on it. It's uh, part of a, a life of surprises. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Rob Sherman did, and then again. Which sounds like an amazing story already. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the t- from the title alone. But it's written by Rob Sherman, so it's probably really good. I haven't found a dot of his yet in in the Hooniverse. Like, it, I mean, in Tiny Deaths, there's, like, one or two stories I'm not a fan of. Mm. One or two. Exclusively one or two. Mm. The so only like story... So that it doesn't go, do good, so... Yeah. So you're saying he's the writer we need to get to bring back, or to bring the uh, hipster Naimon onto the screen? Oh, no, he, he, he told me on Twitter that, now nah, he's never going to bring back the Naimon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, shoot! This is actually need... public knowledge. He actually said that to me on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but... but did you tell him about the hipster Naimon? They're completely different and much more worthy of bringing back to Doctor <laughs> Who. <The hipster. laughs> uh, I, I had to bring know, it up again. For those mm. of you who don't know, the Matt and Co. talk who that I did with Alex, which was like pretty much the last one that actually ended up being successful. <laughs> like, when I say <laughs> successful, I mean... Yeah, I tried to do another one. YouTube didn't allow me. <laughs> Oof. Because it's like, live streaming on YouTube with Hangouts like, impossible now, so this is why this is going to yeah. be recorded. Uh, but really? yeah. You know, yeah, speaking so... of Bernie Summerfield, mm. I've listened to, like, well, most of her first season. Okay, then yeah, it's like novel adaptions, wasn't it, first season? Yeah. Well, apart from, like, I think the last one isn't an adaptation of a novel. I, f- it's, uh, I think it is. It's Dragon's Wrath, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's that's... only, like, one hour, though. Yeah, that's the second um, virgin new adventure of the Bernese ones. I mean, you'd know more about that than... Yeah, yeah. You'd know more that, but... Uh, you'd yeah. know more about that than I do, because you collect the books, so... Yeah. Oh, wow. Something you'd know. Um... But yeah, I mean, I would say, like, they're slow starts, because, like, you've got Oh No It Isn't, which is, uh, Mm -hmm. interesting, not bad interesting, good interesting, but it's not, like, something that, you know, is, like, a good start to, like, the entire series, I feel like, because it Mm. is good, like... They all die, and then they wake up in the world of pantomime. Like, she wakes up mm. as Dick Whittington. Oh my god. And there's a lot of dick jokes in there. Because of course it is, it's a pantomime. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's a bit weird listening to Nicholas Courtney make dick jokes, but you, you know. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. The king's balls get bigger each year. It sounds like that, isn't it? Yeah, something like yeah, that's in there. Um, um, Beyond the, the Sun, I was looking forward to. I had misplaced trust clearly because it's I've, like it's by the same guy who did the like Udu I think, series too. I think the book is meant to be much better. I think it's one of those ones that was butchered by Big Finish in a way. But the, the mm, that's just that did it was the same author, Matt Jones. Was it? No, it was Jacqueline yeah, Rayner, I think. No, Jacqueline Rayner did all of them, apart from Beyond the Sun, which was adapted by Matt Jones. I'm going to have a look. Let's have yeah, a look. <laughs> no, no, Matt Jones specifically did Beyond the Sun. 
Oh yeah. What? That's odd. Yeah. Beyond the Sun is odd. It was. I liked the world building. I liked the performances. I didn't like the writing. But Walking uh, to Babylon onwards, just the, the Time Ring trilogy as a whole, like Walking to Babylon, Birthright, and Just War. Oh my god, yes. I'm hooked. I want to get Series 2 ASAP. Yeah, I've heard the um, novel. I've read the um, novel Birthright, which was quite good. Yeah. It, it's a very basic story, but that's all it needs to be, really. Yeah. What it was. It's weird because I try to think. Okay, who? Wh what would this be like as a Doctor Who story? But with Birthright, it's like not much needs to be changed, right? Mm. Just swap out Jason with Ace, and just the Doctor's not even really in it. He's busy being an iceberg. Mm -hmm. the so th yeah, the thing with Birthright, yeah, the one of the things I find quite interesting about it is that one of the characters, one of the um, supporting characters, is hinted to being the Doctor. Like a future self of him that we don't like know Merlin, about. Like that, yeah. that incarnation. Yeah. Yeah, that's not in the audio. <laughs> oh, wow. That's just... That character's just not there. That's weird, because he's Baker quite instrumental to the book. the Russian guy. Oh. Really? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I remember the Russian guy. Yeah. Just imagine that book, Colin Baker. <laughs> that's just... I, I, I love Colin Baker. Yeah, Colin yeah. Baker's amazing. Hmm. Yeah. I'm glad. I'm. I'm really hoping and that people will get a better appreciation for his doctor. Yeah. Once the uh, season twenty three Blu Ray comes out. Because with in in my experience with all of the box sets that have come out, like uh, especially season eighteen for me, I wasn't a big fan of it. Um, prior to the series, wasn't. I think. I didn't consider Logopolis to be a great regeneration story, but then got to see it in theaters and got to learn a lot more about the the season through it, and it's increased my appreciation. So I realize that Big Finish is the best way to get people to appreciate the sixth Doctor. Yeah, yeah. But sans that, I I hope that people will uh, come to enjoy the sixth Doctor more. Yeah, through, the, through any way that they can, and hopefully through this twenty hour Big Finish live stream. Yeah, yeah, which definitely. I'm probably gonna miss because I'm away with my friends on holiday. Like, actually, I'll probably be in Dundee at that point. <laughs> like, I'll be nearly home, but it will oh. be finishing up. That's the annoying oh, yeah. thing. I'm not sure if I'll be able to catch the end, but I hope to catch as much of it as I can. I I I hope it's like what day is available it again? for like a week. It's the twentieth. It's like the twenty. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. It's like a Saturday and into Sunday. I hope it's available for like a week, so I've got like twenty hours worth of Big Finish to listen to. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, but I'm I'm also like gonna try and review Legacy of Time because you know what? Screw it. Yeah, I'm, I'm right. gonna try and review that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm currently cat sitting just so that I can have just enough money to get legacy of time <laughs> i haven't even brought it yet I'm like, oh god i i, I pre-ordered it apparently it's over halfway sold yeah yeah and that scared me but luckily mm. i earned enough money painting the shed and painting uh, the fence you see I've, i listen to big finish to pass the time but i do it to listen to more big finish yeah. exactly i worked at a uh a records management place and I was just inputting names and birth dates and I was able to listen to Big Finish whilst doing it and it got to the point where I was working so that I could buy enough Big Finish audio so that I wouldn't be bored to tears at work the next week you know I hope you weren't my thing right evil in smile <laughs> yeah <laughs> no no I wasn't I wasn't uh, it actually helped me focus better because I wasn't like insanely worried about making a mistake and then having to ask the boss to fix something that I'd made a mistake on. So, uh, But what was creepy was I listened to a Companion Chronicle uh, that was set, it had Susan in it and it was set in a warehouse. So there were all these like creepy like 
things falling down in a warehouse sounds, and I'm in a warehouse <laughs> going, oh, wait, did something just fall down in here, or was that just a really realistic audio sound? <laughs> what would you was that again? Um, it, let me see. Oh, it was a season one, so that narrows it down a lot. It was one of the... Do, do, do. It's going to be a season one in the next box set. So, oh, yeah, that'll yeah. be good. I believe... I'm gonna, I am going to get the next box uh, set, but like the last second Doctor one wasn't really for me. Uh, it yeah. was the... I believe it was The Sleeping Blood by Martin Day from The Companion Chronicles oh, okay, First Doctor yeah, Volume yeah. 1. Ah, uh, okay. I've not listened to Volume 1. I, I've got both Volume 2s, though. One oh, of them nice. is way better than the other. <laughs> The first Doctor Companion Chronicles are like the best thing ever, man. Like, that yeah, that they're, they're so good. Because um, really um, most of them by Simon Garrier, aren't they? He's brilliant. Yeah, Simon Garrier is just really good at Companion Chronicles. Mm. I've not got many Companion Chronicles. I've got a few. I've got like enough where I'm like, yes, this series is good, but I want so much more. <laughs> there is mm, so much yeah. more. I need them. I, I feel like mm, I feel like if I ever do like subscriptions to the Big Finish monthly range, which I plan on doing, like you know retroactive subscriptions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which the thing is, like twelve month, you can do twelve months, right? And if those, if one of those twelve releases contains specific mm -hmm. audios, you actually get the free audio with oh, it, okay. so you can get like Four Doctors, uh, Return yeah. of the protons i think that's the yeah. one yeah within 51 not 51 to 100 101 to 150 yeah you can get all mm. those like for free and then you right. can also pick your free gift as well mm. so so yeah i'm planning to make my free gifts mostly companion chronicles and torchwood yeah I'm not gonna. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie, but what kind of scares me about Big Finish at the minute is not because I is I you know I love collecting Big Finish, but like lately I've realised I'm actually getting closer and closer to completing my collection. I'm like, oh god. <laughs> I completed the monthly range recently. I was like, oh Jesus. What? Yeah, I did wow. that. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I, I'm Congrats. always. I, that that's impressive. That's insane. To in about a few years, I think about five. I think. But well, you may have completed the monthly range, but I have all nine Sarah Jane Smith audios, which is the better achievement? Your hey. achievement's much better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Stealing hey guys. all of them. That's all of the. Well, the only. Actually, who has all the one to fifty one. audios? I have one to one hundred download, on download. But uh, well, uh, I I have something <laughs> that's going to oh it it was if uh, you wait for them to go on sale it's like one to three dollars in audio it's great um, but this right here guys well, I think this crushes of all of your fantastic this is my gift. big finish CD collection this it's, is this when I say CD collection I mean literal singular you know? <laughs> can you read it out for the listeners at home. It is the Spring 2007 Issue 9 from Big Finish Magazine. It is the Return of the Daleks. Uh, this includes, apparently, Issue 9 had Doctor Who Circular Time by David Warner, The Companion Chronicles, Maureen O'Brien, and Son of the Dragon, James Purefoy. Uh, I think also those Bernice are Summer. because David Warner's those... in Circular Time as, like, Isaac mm. Newton. Yeah. 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 And they then are Maureen O'Brien is in the Companion Chronicles of, I think, a character called Vicky. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, I, you might not be correct on that, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, she plays that general woman. I <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> uh, That's the one. You know, I can't wait to start listening to Dalek Empire. Um, it's yeah. pretty great. Yeah, because I could finish my collection if I just wanted to say goodbye to £20. Yeah, I ha I have listened to Return of the Darts, which is like the prequel to Dalek Empire. And I Ooh, thought that was prequel. like, which which I thought mm. was like very yeah, it is. It's like it's I found it quite bleak in some ways because there was like there was Ogrons like breaking this man's 
body parts apart or something like it was something like that along uh, it's point. Gary Russell era big finish it's yeah <laughs> Yeah, it's that some of that sort of happened in Nicholas Briggs era because if you listen to any of the Daleks, you're like, oh god, there's some proper gore here. It's just, that, it's just the Seventh Doctor, you know, Seventh Doctor stuff doesn't know how to be lighthearted unless if it's Bang Bang a Boom exclusively. I think the recent ones, <laughs> like from the Seven and Mel trilogy, now they've gone quite lighthearted, but they made the Seventh Doctor. <laughs> Yeah, the Seventh Doctor is the bumbling season 25 for him, but this is set after the Hex era. And Ace has yeah. gone back to her immature stage, so she's no longer that adult that Big Finish developed. So. Yeah, because, mm. like, I feel like listening to the settling, I'm just like, I mean, that just confirms she is an adult. Yeah. She is an adult. Like, she's been traveling with Doctor for, like, probably about, well, she met the Doctor probably about 10 years ago for her, probably. That's what I'm assuming. Like, she's in her mid-twenties at this point, it feels like. Because she's yeah. full-on adult. It's ex expressed, and that means it's after the version you adventures. Because she's 19 when she uh, comes back in her uh, military gear. So, yeah. take that, people who think Lung Batter is the absolute last thing and can never cannot have stuff set afterwards. Yeah. And there you go, book people. I will say the Seventh Doctor era continuity <laughs> is really complicated in some ways. I'm like, what the hell? I made a video on it, and it's just like, mm. I, I spotted a mistake in that, and it was just like, the stupidest mistake ever. It's just like, because I fact-checked, and I'm just like, I don't believe these people. Then I listened to Survival of the Fittest, and then I'm like, oh, Klein's story... Oh. Doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. It's just like, it's thinking about it, because I'm just like, wait, Klein's story is being told by Klein before Survival of the Fittest. But oh, like, but Klein's story isn't canon to the main continuity anyway. It's like, okay, if you want to truly listen to this in Doctor Who universe timeline order, you know, listen to post minute three of part one of this story, and then stop two minutes before the end, so that you can <laughs> get the story purely with the young character and then and then just listen to the beginning and end once the character is chronologically that old saying i remember when <laughs> if, you, if, if you want to watch the mcu in chronological order just watch the first <laughs> like moments of black panther and then everything on <laughs> it you forget about that hmm right it's it's that sort of thing yeah yeah, yeah. i i remember the days when i had my big finish collection in chronological order it, I, th I think, like, it's quintupled since then. <sighs> oh, Le oh I, I want to let both of you know my offer that, that I, I've told a lot of people. Um, if you ever need permanent to semi-permanent to permanent overseas storage, I know a guy. Okay? So, for your big finished collections, if you ever need overseas storage, I can set you up with somebody. Is this person called Alex Patterson by any chance? Yeah. <laughs> you know, funny thing about that, it, he might just happen to have the same name as me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm. <laughs> they will be well looked after. <laughs> I mean... Sounds like a good deal to me. I've got some spare unit yeah. stories. Like, classic series unit stuff. Got some spares that I've still not sold. <laughs> There is. I, I, I will know. find room. I was gonna say there's room on my shelf, but there is not. But I will make room. <laughs> do what I do and just build another shelf. Oh yeah, that's that's what I'm. I'm my, currently. My wall will just become shelf, and my shelf will I, become wall. I recently, like my magazines, take up one of my shelves. So I recently found like a bunch of hanging file folders. Uh, and totes to hold them in, so that's what I'm going to be storing my magazines in, which is much oh, okay. better than having them on the shelf, because I, I put them on one shelf, and it was in the middle of my bookshelf, and it just immediately started sagging under the weight. And, oh, like, gosh. trying to move magazines, they just slide back and yeah. forth, and you have to have them so tightly fit on the shelf that if you pull one out, it's like the gap just immediately gets smushed, and there's no chance of getting it back in. Yeah. So, this is gonna work out a lot better, so yeah. that'll that'll make up some room, you know. 
Uh, like, I'm I'm just looking at Big Fish and I'm like, why did I start these series? Why did I start some series? Because that means I'll lead them all. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's like Philip Hinchcliffe presents. So I'm just like, do I re like I want the rest of them? Hmm. At some point. <laughs> Same thing with like Third Doctor Adventures. Like. Yeah. I was Those planning so to keep good. up on that, but then I realized July is a month that hates me. I know. So I'm just like, uh, and then they announced Captain Jack thing, and I'm like, oh well, I want this because it's the it's the the best man in the world with the best Doctor Who costume. Went, mm. Mm, no, <laughs> big finish. You're 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 painting me. <laughs> also, well, like. They knew what they were doing releasing that in June. Like, the most flamboyant, openly gay cast member they've got dressed mm. up in the most pride-themed Doctor's outfit. Yeah. They knew what they mm -hmm. were doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that smart marketing. <laughs> that, yes. Yes. And then they made a title sequence for it. Oh, my word. Which was, like, you know, the most LGBT title sequence ever, but, you know. Yeah, that's why we love the Colin. The it's it's so Colin. good. He's, he's, he's great. He's, he's a great doctor. You know, everyone appreciates what Big Finish did for, like, Colin and Paul, but no one actually really talks about what they did for Peter Davison. No. I love Peter Davison. It Davison's makes sense when you think about it, though. Because... I, it's not really the writing that was the issue for the Fifth Doctor, really. It was more the delivery by Davison. But like when you've got even stronger writing, he was he, he was he's forced to actually, you know, actually understand his Doctor. Yeah. Which only really happened in the Caves of Rangersani, so that's a shame. But that's not the last time he played the Fifth Doctor. Big yeah. finish. Yeah. Yeah. Like, cause I think I've been he, he's a forgotten the doctor, doctor yeah. of the the TV series and I think Big Finish. Yeah, which is a shame because I've been binging his like, Aramem stuff. Yes, I love him. I love Perry, and I love Aramem. They are one of my favorite TARDIS teams, and they've got such a good dynamic. It's basically the season six dynamic but with completely mm. different characters, if that makes sense. So you've got yeah. the Doctor, mm. who's a bit of a fool. A smart fool, but he's an idiot. Because, <laughs> let's face it, the Doctor's a smart person. He's probably the smartest person in the room, but he's still an idiot. That's why I relate to the character so much. Yeah. I'm smart, mm -hmm. but I'm an idiot. Admittedly. <laughs> um, and then you've got... Well, the thing is... Zoe is like super smart and not an idiot, but Perry is just a normal person. And then you've got yeah. someone from the past, and they actually play on the fact that, that because you know, when you've got companions from different time periods, you can do something very clever. Um, which Paul Cornell's wife actually decided to do, <laughs> um, Caroline Simcox in the Council of Nicaea because. You could do something in Perry's past, but Aramem's future. Yeah. Hmm. Right? And although, when you're looking at it, right, you're looking at it from your 21st century perspective of, okay, this is a pure historical. Because Council of Nicaea is a pure historical. It's a good yeah. pure historical. Yeah, it's a good one. Yeah. Which, there's a mm -hmm. lot of Aramem pure historicals when you come to think of that. Well, when I say a lot, there's like a couple but it feels like a, there's a lot of historicals that they do with her but anyway like even though from perry's 20th century perspective it, this is history from mm. aramem's perspective this is just like a future adventure like any of them they've had like three's a crowd or uh what um what else is there like other things that I can't think of, like, acts of insanity, so forth. Like, mm -hmm. this is her future. So, and they, and the thing is, the Doctor and Co, like, you know, meddle in things, 
like metal in civilization's history, like metal in the politics of everything in the future. How is this any different? Yeah. Because it's, it's history, I remember. But Perry's just like, hold, hold on, she's right. <laughs> she's right, how is this any different? And the doctor's like, it's a fixed point in time. Um, and we're just like, how convenient. <laughs> This yeah. It's very convenient. Yeah. Well, like, if you watch, like, the Aztecs, it very much takes on that attitude of, like, time is, is a river that just, it will, it can't be changed, and it will just sweep you along with it. If, if whatever you try and change, it will just, the, it'll course correct. And then you get to, like, Series 5 with Matt Smith, where it's like, time can be rewritten. And if we want to, you know. Uh, yeah, so it's yeah, like it's Doctor Who doesn't correction. consistently choose what type of, of time travel it's dealing with. And then the Doctor yeah. just meddles in everything, even though he gave that whole speech in the Aztecs. And right. then he takes the moral high ground again whenever the meddling monk is present. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, and what's interesting with the first Doctor in the Aztecs is that, that idea of like, well, I've tried. So it's like, we don't hear those as many of those stories companion where it's like... Companion Chronicles, Companion right, Chronicles, right. Companion Chronicles. <laughs> the like, first there's, Doctor there's... trying to change history and not being able to and getting frustrated and, yeah. and sort of beat down to the point of the Aztecs. Like, there's plenty of Companion Chronicles, like, set before in an earthly child, but with, like, I, I wouldn't know if there's any that actually do that. I know there's one called Quinnis, which is literally a mm -hmm. direct, like, hey, this was an adventure that was referenced in, like, Edge of Destruction or something, or one yeah. of the things. Mm. Why not do it? <laughs> it's good I just want to see, like, when that speech in The Reign of Terror, when it's like, you know, we've, we've been through quite a lot together and and he sort of lists some of the stuff to, to just see an extended version of that with all of the like you know the short stories and comics and audios like just him listing off all the again. <laughs> right all the adventures but like you know that would be hilarious <laughs> yeah yeah i think one of the tough things with big finish is they can do so much character development yeah. but because they're still trying to fit it within the stories your character can't be so awesome that you go back to watch their final story and they just seem so much lamer, you know? Yeah. Like, you you can't really progress the character beyond their final episode. Apart from um, Ace. Yes. But yeah. then again, Virgin sort of ruined Ace in a lot of people's eyes, so they just sort of went, let's just start over. But somehow still keep it in the same continuity, presumably. Like... Because Shadowed with, Scourge, Dark Yeah, Clan, Shadowed yeah. Scourge is Bernie Summerfield existing. Like, it's presumed to be the exact same continuity by, like, Big Finish's attitude towards it. So it's just like, that's where the confusion stems from. Yeah, I will say one thing about Big Finish that I'm a bit mixed on. I feel like it's very selective at times what fits in the continuity. It's very selective. Uh, what do you mean? It's like. You know, sometimes they say, oh, this doesn't actually exist, and then they do something else that so contradicts it later on. But it's. it's it contradicts itself all the time. It contradicts itself later. It does, yeah, but, mm. you know, it's just like obvious little bits and that, so. But, you know, you, obviously. You hope that Big Finish is the thing that comes along and, and fixes the continuity yeah. problems of Doctor Either Who. Either that or it breaks it even more. Like, yeah. Fifth Doctor right. Harry so and Mem. That's meant to be like. A few days later, probably. It's years? There's years worth of adventures. And it's not just like, oh, you can presume it's a few months. Because hmm. they did say in one story, yeah, I've been, I, I've been traveling with the Doctor for a few months. Um, like, Perry said that. Because Aramem is still relatively new, even though she's had, like, five adventures on audio at that point. Yeah. Or maybe six, because I try to forget about Necromantia. I've not even listened to it, and I'm just like, oh, I don't no. want to think about that. I've listened to it. It's, it's, yeah, it's, uh, no. We, we all know about it. Mm -hmm. It's disgusting. I'm not going to say any more, but it's Some disgusting. people say its biggest sin is that it's just not a good story. 
and knowing what happens in it, it must be a pretty terrible story. <laughs> it's basically the case of Androzani, because what the writer tried doing is make it the same as case of Androzani. Like, literally, you can select, you can look at some character and say, oh, that's Shadow's Jet, that's that other villain, that's that guy, that's, yeah. yeah. But the only difference is, is that you get witches in it, just, you know, witches and a lot of gore and lots of adult stuff that's not needed there. Adult stuff, yes. Mm. Like, yes. Big Finish basically is just like they they're a more respectable version of what Virgin did because like yeah. they know their target audience is adults at that yeah. point or they knew mm. back in the day because you know Russell didn't come in and say hey I'm going to bring this show back because I'm, I'm a respected writer now and now I can use that power to make Doctor Who exist again, which I am very grateful for. Thank you, Russell. You you, you are a godsend. Like, Definitely. my opinion I of love Russell. Russell T. Davies has actually changed over the past few years. Like, yeah, Damaged same. Goods was the first thing that made me think, okay, this guy's good. And then I thought about it, and then I'm like, his era is really good. Mm -hmm. and, th and then I thought about it more, and I'm just like, okay, he is a good writer. He's, he's just... You know, I think any writer who writes, like, six episodes a year is just going to be, like, mm, they're going to have duds at some point. Yeah. We've seen mm. it with Moffat. We've seen it with Chibnall. But, like, <laughs> I've, I've come to the conclusion that Moffat isn't such a good writer, but he can write masterpieces. Yeah. When the, like, stars align. Because mm. he became famous for a reason. Yeah. He does good stuff. Mm-hmm. He does good right. and popular stuff. It's just, from what I've heard of some of his other work, like final season of Sherlock and just the show Jekyll, mm. full stop. Eh. <laughs> well, Question. my brother and I talk about this a lot, and, and Stephen Moffat can often do like really good one-off stories, oh, yeah. or, or even two-parters, whether that's Blink or Silence in the Library, or Horse of the said. Dead. Uh, right. right. Yeah. But he's not quite as good with overarching <sighs> plots. Um, yeah. Or making those overarching plots interesting to watch again once you know who the character is. You know? Um, so, uh, whereas... Like Series Russell 10, T. Davies, which everyone knew from the offset was going to be Missy. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, was... And it was more the intrigue with w w would it have been the Ronnie, you know? Uh, um, yeah. The thing is, no, like, Series 10... Enough, so she can't do it. Yeah. The mm. thing with Series 10, I feel like what Moffat tried doing is that the fact that he wanted new people to come in, the old fans coming again, people are left to show, I feel like he did it Missy deliberate so people who haven't watched the show get that mystery there, but people who have watched the show don't already guess who it is. And then the later part of the series is for people that stuck to the series. That's how I think Moffat's thinking went there. Yeah, that makes sense to do it then, when you think hmm. about it. Some, well, I'm glad like... your appreciation of Russell T. Davies has grown, because I, you know, his era was what I was introduced to. Same. Joined it, yeah. like, probably 2008 or 2009, so, like, I didn't grow up watching it uh, when it came out, but I did grow up watching it, um on you know dvd or, or yeah. whatever it was and so i always try and double check like am i just being one of those people who's like oh doctor who was better when i was young uh or is it just you know because if there are better eras of doctor who then it is very possible that the people who were born and grew up watching that era are correct when they say oh doctor who was better back in my day um or you know so i i just really enjoy the russell g davies era yeah, I do. Uh, and it's possible for me to enjoy that without hating the moffat era you know um, yeah which is a big era too i think yeah <laughs> you know it's much it was more than four ser series so it was six total but it felt a lot longer because like it took years. a lot longer <laughs> eight yeah. years that was like eight. most of my important years of my life spent <laughs> hating Doctor Who. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nah. 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 Like, I, I, I do plan on revisiting those eras again, though, yeah. at some mm. point. Um, but as, as well as that, like, 
it's weird, like, usually, I've gotten to the point where I can probably feel nostalgic about listening to Big Finish. Yeah. But only because it's, mm-hmm. like, it's been that, it's been so long since I, like, first listened to the original Dark Eyes. It's been, like, four years now mm. since I first listened to it. Oh, um, God, yeah. So it's Do just, you like, ever... Do you ever, like, when you listen to an audio, remember what you were doing or where you were when you first listened to the audio? I was audio? on a plane when I first listened to the first installment of Dark Eyes. So that was, yeah. Mm. But the thing is, I remember being so hooked that I listened to, like, all, like the first three hours of Dark Eyes, like, in that one day. Mm. So I had to, like... It, I needed something for the journey home because I was on a school trip. So, like, I had to wait until a Friday until, like, I could, you know, listen to the rest of it. But then again, the plane journey was, like, two hours anyway, so I had to listen to that and the behind the scenes. Which, I like listening to the behind the scenes. The behind the scenes are good. Especially when they've got a good insight behind certain decisions. You know? Hmm. Yeah. I'm always more I interested wasn't... in the writer's perspective, though, as opposed to the yeah. actors. Because the actors all just say the same thing. Like, oh, I'm such and such, and I play this incarnation of the Doctor. Yeah, it's fun. I've been doing this for years, yep. And then the new actor's just like, oh, this is my experience of Doctor Who. Oh, I never saw it. Oh, I watched it back in the day. Oh, I like these new ones with David Tennant and or Matt Smith. Ooh, it's just basically the same thing over and over again. With yeah. The actors, with the writers, like you get intriguing stuff. Like when I was listening to the behind the scenes of the Fifth Doctor box set, brilliant box set. Get it if yeah, you haven't. Brilliant. Like listening to, like, Jonathan Morris saying, "Oh, I just wanted to give this TARDIS crew, like the season nineteen TARDIS crew, the moments that they should have had in Castro Valva because." Yeah. Like, Castro Valva happens right after Legopolis. There's mm. a lot to mm. unpack after Legopolis with all these people. Adric's just like, right, so the Doctor's changed, right? Mm. I don't know if I'm ready about I'm ready for this. Tegan's just, like, basically been kidnapped. Yeah. Her aunt's been murdered. Yes, and... Nissa, Nissa's da- they should be having a mental breakdown yeah, at this point. Nissa's mum was killed. Then her father Father's was, killed, was killed. And his and body stolen. And the murderer is yeah. wearing his body. And, and then her planet then, sort of doesn't exist anymore. Along with like a third of the universe. Like how is that not... That should have started a uni- I don't know, the, the galactic implications of a third of the universe just being destroyed Yeah. are just, that's huge. Doctor. And it's like, it's arguably the worst loss for the Doctor Yeah. ever, because it's just like, oh, but 33%. It's great, it's, it, but it's his greatest win as well, because 67% of the universe still exists. <laughs> he, <laughs> saved, he saved it, all of life it was ever. Sick. It was 66.6 repeating. <laughs> Don't round up. <laughs> Maybe he just did it early. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes, earlier yes. than yes. that. It's well, I just love that, like... Exactly a third. You, you just wish that they, they would have been able to control Z that a little bit, or at least follow up on the damage that caused. Uh, the Big Bang sort of fixes that. <laughs> Smith re- Are you universe. telling me... Trump and and old... Now. <laughs> And old Nissa gets her mother back, like, just right after the Big Bang, you know? <laughs> uh, I mean, Amy Amy got her parents back after that. Why not? Adric just, were... wake... <laughs> no, no. Adric just wakes up with a dinosaur, like, looking over him. And then she gets <laughs> <pretend> again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. N- Nissa, like, Nissa and the Doctor have a conversation because, like... Psychodrome, just listen to Psychodrome, but like, they have a conversation like in part four where Nissa's just like, I can't even begin to imagine, like, I can't even begin to express, like, don't even know how to, like, you know, feel about Process. all of this, like, having, like, having all your people and your planet gone and feeling utterly alone, and she tells the doctor, I, 
I hope you don't go through this. <gasps> oh. oh. <laughs> Not okay. Too soon. This, Too soon. <laughs> this was released in 2014. This was after Day of the Doctor oh, came out. So. My word. But still, mm. it's like. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. This this wound. Yeah, yeah. Continue pouring mm. lemon juice on it. Yeah. <laughs> no. Rip it open. It's not even rip it open the wound. again. It's like full on lemon juice, just like a gallon of lemon juice <laughs> on this massive wound. <laughs> I love Psychodrome. It's. I actually was quite tearing up by the end of Psychodrome. That that was really good. Yeah, it was. It was a really good story. And then iterations of I was literally tailor made to me. Yeah, it's da Danny, you've listened that. to it, and yeah, I've listened to it, and I'm I'm guessing you're being weirded out by me right now because it's no. about my favorite number. <laughs> <laughs> it is literally about my favorite number. My favorite oh, no. number is a villain in the Doctor Who story. Is your favorite number a villain? Thought not. <laughs> <laughs> also, I mean, I mean, my favorite number is seven. And he gets pretty dark at some points, so maybe? <laughs> My favorite number is I, and having it, having, like, all these mathematical concepts, like, explained to Tegan is literally how I feel trying to explain these to other people. It's like, E is a lovely number, right? Like, you know, certain number, like, because the thing is, it's about, like, there was this cult who, who believed God was a number. And they wanted to find that number. Right? Yeah. And, you know, God is in all things. Numbers appear everywhere in nature. Like, number E. And the T is like, Doctor, where I come from, that is what is called a letter. Tegan is a symbolic... <laughs> symbolic Tegan. <laughs> Just... It, it, me it means... Like... The exponential stuff, which oh, I, I love. E. e is a lovely number, but I, I love I. I is the best number because it it represents something like it, it tells you something about the human condition. <laughs> I I love it for philosophical reasons. Okay. Yeah. Like it's a good reason it, though. It's a good reason to love yeah, it. Yeah, because it's like you know. A number times by itself can never be a negative number. Yeah. But what if it mm -hmm. can? Mm -hmm. Well, what about a negative number times by itself? That, that would a be a negative number. number. It's a positive ah, number, shoot. Alex. <laughs> negative Fair one enough. times negative one is one. See, theoretically, if, you know, that's not how it works in my bank account, okay? <laughs> 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 Your bank's wrong. No. I'm, I'm talking from my big Finnish wallet experience, okay? That number just is always <laughs> negative. <laughs> uh, Be and, and the reason why the TARDIS lands there in the first place is because Adric's piloting it. Oh, and he's from boy. He's from where all the coordinates are negative. And it's just, like, that box set is just like, you get season 19 nostalgia, but you get season 18 fan service. It's lovely. I yeah. Love it. Um, especially after, like, watching season 18. You know, it was a good box set to listen to ne with the collections coming out. Yeah, well, I love that moment in, um, what is it, the, in, the, in Logopolis, where they're just preparing to flood the TARDIS. You know, like, yeah. if they hadn't have landed on the boat, just... No, it was on the pier, right? Oh. Like, on the, on the boat, wasn't it? It, it was somewhere that wasn't the water. <laughs> wasn't yeah. the water. Something got in their way. And uh, it's just, it's like that plan was literally just swim, even though a massive amount of water will be pouring yeah, into the darkness. Yeah, that made no sense. And I yeah. think Christopher Bates bid me to try to defend in that. Even though uh, you can't, can't, don't feel convinced when he tries to defend it. The only good thing that I've experienced from Christopher H. Bidmead is from Tios. I like Chris. That's an underrated beer. one. Yeah, I like Ventios. I like. Mm. I do need to like listen to Renaissance of the Daleks and oh, no. uh, like the, the, the Hollows of Time. His big friend stories are. I've listened to the Hollows of Time. That was that was cool. 
how, how was Professor Stream? Oh, <laughs> Professor Stream, it's, you know, your, yeah, your favorite, been, uh, yes. maniacal, goatee person. <laughs> yeah, I don't know just, who that was meant to be originally. Just as good as at mm. Yeah. I just feel like we're hollows of time. Like, part one's fine. My only problem with it is that, you know, the child character is not... It's quite... It gets on my nerves a bit. Like, but that's children, isn't it? But... Yeah. And then the second part is just sort of... Oh, look. Um, we don't want the tractators to talk. We want it to be a run around instead. We want the doctor to go off somewhere just to talk to the tractators when we don't even... There was a lot that. of back and forth. It, it's strange to be listening to an audio and to realize that it's got the same problems as the running down corridors thing. Yeah. You know? It's, it's, <laughs> it's like, wait a second. It's like a TV We can't see this, so. but... Yeah. You know, I, I really want all of season 23, <laughs> like the, the original planned season 23 and all Yeah. Because we've got four of them now. Yeah, we do. Because Ultimate Evil, which I'm gonna get, because I want that Evil Ray in my life. Because, you know, because it's about, like, the main villain turns, uh, like, innocent bystanders into, like, raging killers. Because he has this, like, ray gun. And he shoots people and turns them evil. And he is stopped when the doctor, right, turns the ray gun into a good ray and turns people good again. <laughs> It yeah, sounds so yeah. stupid, and I love that, and I want it, and it's just like, you, you know, yeah. I, I don't actually know how well grounded the story is, because it is a target novel. I think it's quite mixed. I think some people like the weirdness of it, but I think some people just sigh it. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna treat it like Thor Ragnarok, just, it's not meant to be serious at all. Yeah. Like, it's... Like, it has some seriousness in it, only so it has integrity, you know? Because, you know, Doctor Who is quite a camp show, but there are seriousnesses in, like, even the campest of stories to, like, at least make it feel, you know, like a Doctor Who story and not, like, Red Dwarf. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the reason why Thor in Endgame was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> and Thor in Ragnarok was actually really good. <laughs> uh, do, you got, do you guys like Monty Python? Not seen much of it. Um, Because yeah, the Big Finish Audio Castle fear is like, it's got, you know, a Rutan in there, but it's very much like, what if Dot 2 did the Monty Python? Isn't that whole trilogy, like the Stockbridge trilogy, isn't that yeah. like basically a love letter to DWM? Yeah, basically, yeah. Mm. Yeah. I I've read the DWM ones, so I'm excited to listen to that trilogy. Oh, the comic strip adaptations from earlier this year. Yes. yes. Oh my god. Oh, I haven't listened to them yet. Trying to explain that to to anybody who's not a Doctor Who fan, right? So is Meep like, the Meep is so one there's of the greatest this... villains in in the history of written media. Yeah. So, so I've read the um, TV comic show. Of Doctor there's Star this Base. TV show I like, but the, there's an audiobook company that makes stories based off the TV show, but it's not the TV show and it's not an audio book of, 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 of an existing book, but this one is actually an audio book of a comic strip. It's just like... <laughs> and, uh, but it's, it's so not like meta. It's rated, it's like they get... Uh, it's, it's like if the it's like if the comic strip was adapted into a TV story, but there was no visuals. Yeah. <laughs> Which, <laughs> Which sort of defeats the main the strong suit of a comic. <laughs> Uh, also, the stage plays work really well in terms of adaptations because it's literally just, it feels like an actual, like you're actually sitting down, like watching a stage play, except you're blind. Yeah. Hmm. So like, hmm. when I, when I picture it in my head, it's pretty much just how I picture any, like, Big Finish audio, but it's just like, structurally, it is 100%. A stage production. Also, the singing in the Ultimate Adventure. It's a musical. Oh really? yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. What? Uh -huh. to, uh, the Ultimate Adventure is wow. a musical. I forget that sometimes. 
Now I need to that's, check it out. That's the reason why <laughs> Crystal is a singer. It's because so, so she could sing in the Ultimate Adventure. <laughs> uh, you know, Crystal reminds me a lot of Tegan. In a way. Hmm. Hmm. She, she just wants a normal life. But she's whisked away into an adventure. Hmm. So, yeah. Ooh, companions. Let's talk companions, because we, we just... Yeah, companions are great, aren't they? Oh, yes. Like, I don't think there's a single mm -hmm. companion from TV that Big Finish have done that I don't like. Because they made Rose not terrible. And that's the closest to bad a companion has been from TV, translated yeah. to audio. Just, they're the best they have been in that particular season they're trying to recreate. So, she's not a terrible character. Yeah. So, I can listen to the stories without wanting to punch the nearest wall, which technically when I was on the bus was a window. So, good job, Big Finish. You didn't <laughs> make my hands bleed. <laughs> Ooh. But Jackie was in uh, one of those audios, so my ears not so <laughs> didn't work so. Oh. That that's an uh, an interesting review. You didn't make my hands bleed. <laughs> <laughs> Big finish. Twenty nineteen. Big finish. We 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 love your we love our customers not hurting themselves. <laughs> we love buses. So <laughs> listen to our audio. Yeah. We love based on the siege. Uh, <laughs> I mean, they're doing an awful lot of those, aren't they? Big finish. Have you said there is a lot or not a lot? A lot of based on the siege stories. Yeah. Yeah. It's quite a lot. Heck, like Cold Vengeance was a base under siege. Yeah. Uh, and that. I thought it was a vinyl. <laughs> But Speaking of Ice Warriors, though, uh, I recently listened to Lords of the Red Planet, and that was brilliant. Yeah, yeah, I... Why are the Lost Stories so expensive? I know. That's my... That's the only reason I haven't really got into them. And the sale recently? Because I didn't really have too much money to spend. Yeah. I... My only two choices were really the fourth Doctor box set, or season 27. And I'm Ooh. thinking, well... With the fourth Doctor box set, I'm more, I'm less likely to get that on its own than season twenty-seven in a bundle. Yeah. So that's mm. why I got that. That's my same reason. Like the thing is, the previous Lost Story sale, the last one before that, I got Philip Hinchcliffe presents hmm. volume one because for some reason that was in that sale. Yeah, it's a bit odd that. Yeah. Maybe those were like ideas Philip Hinchcliffe had like ages ago. And then just yeah, like, hey, probably. let's just do these. Which, brilliant box up, by the way. Yeah. Um, he also said there was also another lost story that was for the Pentacliff, wasn't it? But that was actually meant to be a TV story. Yeah, that was, was in... I th the uh, fourth I th Doctor box set. It's, yeah, it is in the fourth Doctor box set. The it? Valley of Death? Yeah, because yeah. Hamilton War is Rob Baxter, right? Yeah. Because... I enjoyed the Valley of Death. I need to listen to it. My, my Was that not the one where Leela swings on the Doctor's scarf like Tarzan? Yeah. That was a highlight for me. I that can't was... wait until I listen to those then, because it's like... Uh, luckily for me, going to uni requires taking the bus for me. Mm. I'm already planning out which stories I'm going to listen to at uni, so that's going to be fun. Yeah. Um... Also, I've recently been listening to, like, a bunch of short trips. Because mm. I own the physical ones. Oh, yeah. I also own them on download. Like, those physical ones and those physical ones only. And I listen to them. And they're really good. My fa like, okay, my favorite one is one that I listened to last year. Because I listened to Volume 1 last year, but the other three, like, over the past like week mm -hmm. like because mm -hmm. usually like i listen to 
like a monthly, and then I'm like, I'm not really ready to listen to another, so I just listen to the short stories, and I've run out of them, and that scares me. Uh, but... I think my favourite one out of all the short trips that I've listened to so far, apart from the Paul Sprag ones, because those are actually beautiful. Um, my favourite one is the one where Nissa turns the TARDIS into a whale. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> the TARDIS oh turns into a whale in Volume 1. Wow. Y yeah. It's... I just that love it. Been a, a, that must have been a whale of a time. It was. Um, the thing is, <laughs> <laughs> Volume 2 is has a story, probably probably the one with the weakest premise, because like, when I listened to it, and then when I first described it to someone, I was in a call with Jean-Luc, and I actually described the Doctor's coach, that short story in Volume 2 of The Sixth Doctor, it's basically, here's, here's the plot summarized. The Doctor loses his coat, and then he finds his coat. The end. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> that's the Doctor's coat. Oh. Uh, the rest of the Sixth Doctor ones are, re are good. The thing is, I was thinking the Eighth Doctor ones were going to be pretty weak, because, like, the one in Volume 1 just wasn't good. Yeah. Because it's just, like, I, th I think that one's about witches as well, <laughs> or something. Oh, God. I don't know. Oh, no, not witches. Witches are bad. Like, bad for Big Finish. They're bad for Big Finish. <laughs> the only good stories with witches are, like, like, The Witch from the Well and anything starring Tom Baker. Maybe yeah. Carrie Knight stories, I don't know. Oh, that yeah, the Carrie Knight one's Gareth good. Roberts, and that's not good. Um, but, yeah. So, Wings of a Butterfly is probably the best one with the Sixth Doctor. Um, not just because it's written by the Sixth Doctor. <laughs> yeah, Colin Baker wrote a Doctor Who audio. Yeah, he's written quite a few. He's written quite a few short stories Doctor related, actually. Yeah. Like, no fan fiction. <laughs> the thing is, I can't seem to remember, like, which, like, what the Sixth Doctor ones were. So, Volume 3, Murmurs of Earth. I honestly can't ever think about that one, actually. And that was me saying, oh, it was, that they're all amazing. They're so amazing, I can't remember them. Uh, of Earth, what was that about? I think it had think it Perry, Perry in it. That's all I remember. Perry's in it. Also, Colin Baker doing an American accent is the best thing ever. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, um, guys, sorry to cut short, but, um, I'm afraid I've got to go now because of things. Alright. Yeah. See, so, right, yeah, I'll send you the, um... Continue. Huh? Alex, no, I'm I'm good with what I can go for a little bit longer. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Um, if you do this another time, please let me know, and I'll happily join. Okay. Let's see awesome. ya. Goodbye, good to everyone. You. you too. Good, goodbye. Goodbye, goodbye. The eight Doctor ones can be really good, though. Yeah, some of the Time War ones too looked incredible. <laughs> I, I really need to listen to more short trips, but it's just like, I'm more concentrated mm. on like getting the physical stuff, because it's just like, you know, if I get How them, you... then that's easier. How do you manage that? That's just, oh wow, I can't... How do I manage getting physical stuff? I mean, there's just so much to collect, and I, just, I, I imagine you must be quite good at getting a deal, because, oh my word, that's... Not particularly like it's it's because like you know how money isn't exactly infinite mm -hmm. if it was i've noticed yeah <laughs> if it's it not was, growing on as many trees anymore it seems mm, no <laughs> especially now they're becoming plastic <laughs> uh in instead of mm. like 
a material that isn't plastic. It is now plastic. It's, it's like, oh, money, paper. No, it's not paper. If you think it's paper, you're silly. Hmm. It's just if you think it's a physical thing, you're silly. <laughs> if you think money, if you think we, ex if you think existence is a thing, you're silly. Honestly. <laughs> I wasn't going that far, but, you know, uh, I, I am kind of silly. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, I mean, so you are just, in a nutshell, what have you found to be the most effective strategy for collecting Big Finish on CD? Is it just, is it, is it just cough it up and, and don't buy groceries? You know, don't waste your money on frivolous things like groceries? Um, just Just survive off of Big Finish? I mean, because <laughs> I'm willing to try and make that pitch to my family, you know, because <laughs> probably not the best idea, but like, no, the, no, here's the most effective strategy for me. Hmm. Basically, you get as much money as you possibly can, spend it mm. on Big Finish. Mm. And just spend a lot of time on it, because mm. the massive one hundred percent focus. Well, not just a one hundred percent focus. Like the when you see big collections on YouTube, like if you see someone like TJ Productions, his collection became as big as you eventually see it in twenty eighteen. Like if you see mm. him in like early twenty fourteen, he didn't have much, but. In, by 2018, he had quite a bit. Pertwee Smith oh, 11, yeah. his collection became so big because he just has been collecting for quite a while now. Mm. Same case for me. Although my collection isn't as big as Danny's or Pertwee Smith 11's, my collection is still like, if, if someone sees it, like m most people who mm. are into like collection videos are just like, wow, that's a big collection. So I'm not mm. like holding the record on on youtube or anything but it's like right you, you know it's it's still There's a big so collection big to finish. a lot of people yeah and i feel like the best my, my strategy is to have variety and that and a good way to do that is by looking at recent releases following some ranges like mm. for me the two ranges that i definitely follow are uh, Gallifrey Time War, or just the Gallifrey series in general, because that's easy mm -hmm. to keep up with, and War Master. Um, also, just anything, anything that also interests me. You know, it helps a lot, right. like right. keeping right. up with Big Finish. But like, you can't buy everything, like that mm. they put out each month, and there's also the big back catalog. So. Right. Yeah, but to me, just it's just like piece. once you eventually get to a stage where you have almost completed something, like mm -hmm. focusing all your attention on that helps because it it means that you know it gives you that sense of progress. Yeah, because hmm. I remember when I completed. I Davros on CD, which if anyone listening wants to attempt to start getting those on CD, uh, unless if you can find a bundle of all four, don't. It's because <laughs> it, only the first one was available on CD uh, when I started. And that's what I got. Then I found mm -hmm. pretty decent eBay uh, listings for uh, episode 3 and episode 4 but episode 2 just doesn't exist anywhere apart from rarely on eBay I've hardly seen it so the first mm. chance I saw it on eBay I got it and I spent like £17 on it ok it was mm -hmm. £16 but £1 posted packaging mm -hmm. so yeah it's like if you want something you kind of have to get it if it's rare and out of print, and you get a sense of achieve. You also get a sense of achievement when you've sort of completed something. 
Oh yeah. So for example, like, yeah, I I Davros I've completed. Uh, Sarah Jane Smith I've also completed, which gave me a. Sense you got of comeback, huh? Yeah, I do have comeback. Wow. Yeah, the 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 most out of the most. Like the the story that most modern big Finnish fans haven't listened to because you can't. Um, mm. That's what terrifies me is like my you know the goal was to collect all the big finish. I'm gonna do it on download because I'm too yeah, far to swap over. Um, and then there are those things that just aren't available as, on download, like, and it's like oh shoot, Summerfield, which is scary. Because mm. like. All of her single releases are on CD, which, the thing is, I'm probably just going to get all of those in bundles, because they're not so expensive, because they're like 20, 20 quid a pop. So, mm-hmm. so like, and some of them have more than four stories in them, in each series. Like, okay. uh, a handful of series have more than four stories. So oh, they're, right. yeah. like, a bit more expensive. Although, for the longest time, Series 1 was, like, under £20. So I was, like, for my birthday, right? Also, a good way to, like, get Big Finish is to have mm-hmm. birthdays and have Christmas. Right. So right. If, if you can somehow manipulate time so you can have multiple birthdays and multiple <laughs> Christmas. Become <laughs> the queen. Have multiple birthdays. And be well, super rich. The, the one... <laughs> The one bonus to the U.S. series season ten Blu-ray coming out in October, rather than in July, uh, is that you know my birthday's in October, so it's like you know that is uh, that's definitely going to be something that I'm like, please buy me this, you know. Yeah, when uh, it was announced cause... that season ten was going to be in July, I'm just like, another thing. Yep. Doctor yep. Who, can you not be obsessed with just? Like, when was the last time you aired in July, huh? Air in July, you cowards. At least have... At, le- <laughs> at least have the decency to air in July if you're so obsessed with July. Mm. Like... Ugh. It's... it's like, right, between, you know, yeah. Legacy of Time and <laughs> the Season 10. And War Master 3 and Lucy Miller box set. Oh, the further adventures of Lucy Miller. Yep. <gasps> yes, please. That's the next thing when, I'm <laughs> when Big Finish years after finishing a range realizes, wait a second, we can just insert ourselves into our own stories and keep telling more and more. This is great. Yeah, but when are Eight and Charlie going to have their stories again? Exactly. But, um, you know, like, you, you can't top Chimes of Midnight, so... I think they're just too scared to try. I know, but like... Doesn't mean you shouldn't try. There's, there's I'm room. totally down for it. There's room. Yep. We, we di- we, I don't think we actually found out what happened to the Vortisaur from Storm Warning to me. Oh, no way. <laughs> a Vortisaur that would spin-off. Be great. We're getting like, uh, a spin-off based the hipster, on the robots of death. The hipster Naimon rides that Vortisaur oh through time God. and space. I don't know how that would work That's continuity it. wise because Char- Charlie didn't meet the Naimon at that That's point. That's what you think. <laughs> it, it's going to happen now. <laughs> I mean, some people would say there's a problem with RMM apart from she probably can't exist from a continuity point of view because there is no room between Planet of Fire and Caves of Androzani, but okay. Years. Okay. <laughs> Um, well, that's the thing with, like, trying to figure out when the Ninth Doctor had all those solo adventures without Rose. Before Rose. And it's that thing of, like, it's not that before hard, Rose. It's not, that, well, it's not that hard to believe But it. it's that thing where it's, like, if you close the TARDIS doors for a second, you can fit in years of a Doctor traveling, <laughs> and then it's fine. It's, like, it, it's it's about seeing that clearly wasn't the intention it, it, of the original story. It was, like, him going... Oh wait a second! Oh yeah, it it can travel through time. You know, like yeah. if you just watch the episode, nobody thinks, 
oh well, I bet he spent a really long time just traveling around the universe, and then all of a sudden went, oh wait, I should have told her it travels in time, I'm, I'm going to come back. I, you know, I but that's think, the sort of reality you need to accept if you're trying yeah. to make Doctor Who continuity yeah, work. I think Russell actually just more intended that that wasn't the first time he saw his face, he's just doing a thing. Like, oh, look yeah. at the ears, oh, they're so big, ooh. And I'm just like, Doctor size doesn't matter, you should know this by now. But he becomes more immature about it than Day of the Doctor. Multiple times, because the Doctor compares to Sonic, and it's just like... <sighs> I can't wait till Jody comes in. Because <laughs> then we won't have this toxic masculinity in my Doctor Who. <laughs> this, yeah. this, is, this is true. The benefits of having a female Doctor. You won't get comparing sizes you don't get those jokes or maybe they'll just do that joke in the 60th and she'll have like the biggest sonic screwdriver and she's like yep <laughs> what did you think of the uh peter capaldi's uh what was it season 10 sonic screwdriver i don't think that got as much on-screen recognition no. as as it should have what um, i think is that it's a sonic screwdriver. It is the work of the devil. I don't like the sonic screwdriver. It's it's annoyed me so much now. Like you don't like Deus Ex Machina. <laughs> Doctor should be the Deus Ex Machina. Doctor Ex Machina. Right here, here's my short trip idea. <laughs> just with that <laughs> name, Doctor Ex Machina, and just have. Just have it be a very meta story. Like, I feel like the meta stories are the best stories, especially when they're short stories. Because, like... Hmm. It's like... Have it short be stories are, like, we... About, We like, can do, like, a silly little thing, but it doesn't have to be, like... Not even it's silly. Just... It, it, it's just, like, so meta, because, like... Um... Forever Fallen is, like, one of the best ideas for a Doctor Who story ever. Because you know how a Doctor, like, always, like, offers a villain a second chance of redemption, right? Mm hmm Unless if he's already given them a second chance, in which case, nah, mate, nah, Davros, you're Space Hitler. Um, mm. Just, what if that villain was, like, it, what if the villain took the Doctor up on that offer? Hmm. Forever Fallen is great. It's like like wait a second what redemption is possible it's not just a, a villain who's like no i'm gonna let go of your hand and fall to my death rather than reform you know <laughs> no i'm gonna pre i'm going to destroy the world okay then i i've just stopped you because i'm the doctor <laughs> mm. uh, you know i really do want to have like a story that, like a short story that's basically just like the Doctor... You know how, like, there's the trope that, you know, someone's calling for a Doctor and the Doctor just steps in and fills that role? Mm -hmm. I kind of want a story where that happens, but then the actual Doctor they called for shows up. <laughs> and then it's just awkward. Like, I've actually... I do kind of want to submit that, but it's just like, right, how do I end that? How do I make it a story? Because short stories are stories as well, not just things mm. that don't end. That just, that just like they stop, but they don't end. If that makes sense. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's just how how do I make that work? And that's the only reason I'm not submitting it because it's like it's a vanger idea, but it's not, you mm. know. You know, I, mean, I mean, maybe maybe uh, submitting it is, would be the only way to put yourself in a creative panic that would actually cause you to answer that question. Yeah, but it probably won't end up being <laughs> a thing. Probably wouldn't even end up as a subscriber short trip. Yeah. Hipster Nylon would make it all the way to the top, though, I tell no, you. No, because you're not allowed to have villains from the TV show in it. Uh, but in this case, it's so awesome they would make an exception. I will not take no for an answer. <laughs> if they ever ask me back, I'll just be like, right, who owns the Nymon? Mm, Let mm -hmm. me speak with them. 
I will not take my... no for an answer. <laughs> Here, here's my pitch for a short trip, right? Right. It's, it's for all of those fans who remember what it was like pre Day of the Doctor, trying to figure out how the Eighth Doctor regenerated into the Ninth, right? Right. So he's walking in the TARDIS. You know that like spiral staircase in the wardrobe? Yeah. Well, he's at the top of that. Doesn't see one of Tom Baker's scarves just lying around. <laughs> trips on it, falls down the spiral staircase, starts at the top as the 8th Doctor, falls down the stairs as the ninth Doctor in the 8th Doctor's clothes, and that is literally the short trip. You're welcome. You're welcome. It's a short trip that's literally a short trip. Who cares about canon anymore? Big Finish don't even care. (laughs) <laughs> they they made a story set in between the Doctor teleporting and the five Doctors. They don't care. They will make continuity. <laughs> They'll invent continuity. <sighs> the, the Big Finish is literally like the, the tenth Doctor at the end of The Waters of Mars. He's like, the probably I'm the Time Lord Victorious. There well. They're probably gonna They're probably gonna fit stories within like the tenth Doctor parade of death pretty much. Like, they're probably gonna do stuff like, no, actually, they already have done. They've done, like, short trips set within, like, the Tenth Doctor of his single companions at the end of End of oh. Time. Jago and Lightfoot Revival. Oh. That's, that makes, okay, that makes End of Time slightly better because he visited Jago and Lightfoot. Mm-hmm. But he visited everyone. It's like, aren't you supposed to, like, be regenerating? How do you have time to visit, like, everyone? Well... <laughs> Like, you're visiting Jago and Lightfoot. Who else are you going to visit? Like, Aramem? I mean, I mean Peter Oliver Capaldi's Harper? speech was... Peter Capaldi's speech was pretty long. Like, there might be some time before <laughs> a regeneration has to begin. Like, a detour of Twice Upon a Time. Twice Upon a Time was already a detour. Hmm. It's just... The, the Twelfth Doctor, turns out, has an adventure with every other Doctor before... <laughs> You know, he just, I mean, sexist. that's quite a cool idea of series of a series is to, you know, or a short trips anthology would just to, you know, have um, like a Time Lord uh, Inquisitor uh, who's trying to understand the renegade mind travel with special Time Lord privileges to the moment before each doctor dies and have a conversation with them, like what's going through their head. What do, like do they think they'll survive? Was really it worth good. it? That's a good idea. They should just hire us to make Doctor Who stories. Like, I tell you, when I say they, I mean Big Finish, because let's face it, like if if the TV show ever let me make Doc, like make me there, if they ever let me make stories, yeah, Doctor Who's not gonna survive that long. <laughs> My stories are gonna be like. <laughs> Here's the thing. You're like, we're going out with a bang. You know, like, we're going out. There's no question, but how we go out, people, is is what I'm going to answer. No, no, no. What I'm going to do, right, is do something mm-hmm. for the sake of, like, creative art. But it will kill the show because it's just... Or it will get me fired because I am a madman. You cannot stop me. I would, like, I think out of anyone, I'd probably be the one to actually set a Doctor Who story, like, in the worst parts of World War Two. The worst parts. You could probably think which worst parts okay. they are. Yeah. Oh, Like, boy. you know, Demons of the Punjab was painful to watch, but I'm just like, I like pain, but this is, like... You know, if if we're going on... This is like disclaimer at the beginning of the episode. <laughs> this disclaimer content may not be Disclaimer at the beginning soothing. of every episode. I'm going to make Doctor Who rated oh. 18. You cannot stop me. God. Oh, God. I would... Do you know what? I would actually do a body horror Cyberman story. Like, actually make it rated 15 as well. But as a Halloween special. I don't care if no one watches it. It's fully art. <laughs> I will... I will fund it myself oh. if I have to. 
And it will be this a Doctor is... Who story, no spin-off, baby. Just this is this is Doctor Who. This is a Doctor Who story. There's blood. There's like Cyberman and like partially converted Cyber basically. I watched Cyberwoman and was sort of inspired mm. by some of the imagery. Like the imagery of like that guy who was partially converted. I was just like, I want this, but all of it. I don't want sexy Cybermen. I want this, because I'm a twisted freak. <laughs> I, I, I enjoy oh, it when boy. Doctor Who just does insane. I, you know, I actually just do love insanity when it comes to any fiction. That's See, I, I'll just be, you know taking canine for walks around Bannerman Road. <laughs> That's where you'll find me. <laughs> yeah, and, and I'm just like, right, so you know Ghost Light. What if it yeah. was even more Ghost Light? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it, it's now like, oh my yeah, gosh, what? you're going from Ghost Light to like Ghoul Sun. Like, <laughs> just taking it up a level. Just like, what, what if we made a Doctor Who story like that, but more... <laughs> Like more, more what? More, more insane. I tell you what, th this is a Seventh Doctor story that is. There are two Seventh Doctor stories that are, you know, like everybody. Well, a lot of people's favorite Seventh Doctor story is Remembrance of the Daleks. It's amazing. Yeah. As an aside to that, like these two stories are some of my favorite Seventh Doctor stories, and. Well, okay, I should say Battlefield is a close second, if not a first, for Remembrance of the Daleks for me. I absolutely love that story. That's incredible. But the Happiness Patrol and Paradise Towers are just... They're, they're some of my favorite Seventh Doctor ones. That, it's just... That's it, completely fine. It's, they're just so much fun and so wonderfully wacky and somewhat really like ha the happiness patrol has some like actually you know in interesting emotional layers uh yeah. to the story whereas paradise towers is just so wonderfully wacky yeah. like the fact that there's a a companion called bin liner is is just something yeah, that my my brother and i just absolutely love that episode yeah. and it's like this is you know and then uh, a deranged guy thinking that this robot is like, you know, what is it, my pet? What, what can daddy daddy feed you today? And it's like, That's a good impression, actually. That's scarily <laughs> good, Alex. You're an American. You're not meant to sound British. Oh, yay. Yay. This is, this is great. Um, and, and it's just stuff like that where, and, and then it's like, all oh, hail the great architect. It's just, <laughs> we'll like now reference that episode way more than and it, uh, and it, anything else is just yeah. it's brilliant you know there's, there, there is a monthly range audio right that is basically paradise towers that except like you know how paradise towers decided to go with the stuff it had and go wacky with it mm -hmm. what if right you had a similar sort of thing it's like a completely different plot but a similar sort of aesthetic right except go dark and go like okay right because red is basically they developed something that stopped humans from being violent murderers mm -hmm. but then the suppressed violence from a time traveler sort of like becomes incarnate and like takes over other people's chips that were implanted and makes them murderers Wow. Yeah. What one was this? It's called Red. Oh, oh Red, of course. Red. Okay, there we go. Red. There we go. Yeah. Wow. It's It's interesting. It's actually, you know, one thing Big Finish have done, right? I mean, you can praise how they made the sixth doctor not a dick and the fifth doctor a character, all you want. But they made Mel likable. Uh, hey. Likable. Hey. They didn't just make her not annoying, like with Rose. 
They made her likable. Even Adric isn't as annoying, but then again, I, I, did, I never really found Adric annoying, mainly because, unfortunately, he's the companion I most relate to, because I'm a maths nerd. Uh -huh. That's why I love iterations of I. Do you have, like, a, a badge of mathematical excellence? I wish. I didn't even win the maths prize, like, one of my friends did this year, <laughs> and I'm just like, he's not even wanting to do maths. I, I deserve, then again... He did get, like, full marks, but I don't care. Oh, uh, you know, we, we're talking about crazy settings for, like, sticking in more stories in Big Finish. What if it's, like, there's a spin-off series with Adric where the Doctor actually just goes one day, Huh, you know what, I could just materialize right after we left and, and pick up Adric again. And then, like... They go off, they have adventures, they have a lot of fun, until one day, Adric, like, really annoys the Doctor so much so that he just knocks him out with a cricket bat, tosses him back in the TARDIS, leaves him back on the ship. He wakes up and goes, now I never, I'll never know if I was wrong, you know? <laughs> and there we have Big Finish. I was going to say, like, it, 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 the story happens as Adric is falling to Earth, uh, but <laughs> he was in a spaceship. Yeah. Um, what else could fit? Um, I mean, it's only a matter of time before they bring Bruno Langley back to just have his own spinoff series. <laughs> I doubt it. He, he was sort of in got the... arrested at one point, so I doubt they'd want to. Oh, really? Him. Yeah, I think. Oof. I think like sexual harassment or something like that. Oh no, I did not mm. know this. This was after Ninth Doctor Chronicles happened. Hmm, I was going to say, it must have been. Um, um, they could ask him back, they could not, I don't know. I was trying to think of minuscule companions, um, where... Katarina, they're doing something with her later this yes. year. Yes! <laughs> yes! Oh, oh my gosh, oh! The problem is, because I was thinking, okay, I'll submit a short story this year to this year's competition. And it will mm -hmm. try and fit in Katarina, like have more it'll make a gap. It will I will invent the gap. Uh -huh. And then they announce that and I'm like I wanted to be special. <laughs> you thought of it first. <laughs> it was first big finish. Like and I had a beautiful title for it. D -d 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 Children of the stars or something like that. Or Door mm. of the Gods or something like that. But now they're that, like, calling that, like, Door of the Gods. And I'm just like... Oh. Eh. Ouch. Oof. The, um, the, the, I, I saw this funny, like, meme on Twitter about the early adventures this year. Mm -hmm. And it's like... Uh, I need to find it, actually. Right. I'm going on Big Finish memes on Twitter. Which, yes, that's an actual account. Oh, my I word. Recommend I need it. to... Follow this account. Big Finish memes. The the good old memes. Uh, oh. Oh, I already follow them. Haha. <laughs> right, so... Ooh, I found it. Um, so it's like, this one sparks joy. Picture of Dorsal oh. Guard. This one does not spark joy. And it's <laughs> Home Guard, the one with the the transphobic mm. master so that yeah. is funny wow yeah it's it's funny because we're laughing at horrible people because we don't like them and that's the funny thing because they have outdated views politics with big finnish fans <laughs> gotta love politics that's why the gallifrey series is so good <laughs> Oh my gosh, that series is just amazing. Yeah, I. But the thing is, I. So it's like fast paced and yeah. gripping, and like it. It was everything you wanted it to be, and it feels like even though you have like two canines, it feels like you have four companions that you're just getting to hang out with and and know so much more. Yeah. It's just. And plus, like, Galif Gallifrey, the Gallifrey series made me like K9. I wasn't a K9 person. Uh, okay. I wasn't a fan of the character. But then, 
mm-hmm. Galfrey happened, and I'm just like, this, this, this popper is very funny. Mm. This metallic doggo is very funny. I like. <laughs> <laughs> just like you suddenly become Borat, just like I like. They 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 won you over. Yes. That that's the thing. Big Finish are good at bringing companions back. Like I've not really heard the, the season one Tardis team like at all because I'm scared that I won't connect with them because the two surviving actors sound old as hell. So. Speaking of actors who are older, this is this is my pitch for showrunner, right? In every episode of the season, you would have cameos of the actors. Forget about them playing uh, who they used to be in, in the series, unless, you know, you're Paul McGann and you haven't aged a day. Uh, you know, he does actually the, look a little older nowadays, but only a little. I mean, it does you not know, look it's... like he's going to be 60 next year. Oh, 60 this year, I think. Might be, yeah. So, like, you know, bring them back, but, you know, have them play characters that, you know, fit their current looks there and, and let them just, you know, bring, back bring their gorgeous. acting chops to the role and just have so many, like, actually bring back the actors to the show Instead of just waiting for them to die off and and then go, you know what? We're gonna bring back lookalikes, okay? Then we'll then we'll bring them back. You know, like bring back the actors who, you know, we don't know. I mean, we don't know how long any of us have left on this planet. Make use of those actors again. You know, that that is deep. Big finish utilize them all the time. I mean, like right. Seriously, like. Peter Purvis doesn't sound like he's aged a day. He's nope. also aged very gracefully. He li- like mm-hmm. all he's all he's had is like white hair and old person skin. And when I say that, it just it like doesn't even look that wrinkly. It just like looks like he has the skin of an old man. <laughs> that he's came just, out like he just, just off. like carved. <laughs> he's like who's <"Who's> Levine. <laughs> Who have also returned to Big Finish in the Lady Christina box set. I'm glad they picked up with that character. You know, some of the sets you're like, wow, you're scraping the bottom of the barrel. But I'm very glad. Because, I mean, you see that. And, uh, like, the chemistry worked so well. The characters were both super awesome. Like, Tenth Doctor, Lady Christina. Like, she had the the whole, like, Don and Noble vibe of, like, no, I'm going to do whatever I want to do, and you can come along for the ride this time uh, as a companion. And it just makes it all the mo- that much more heartbreaking that, like, the Doctor was like, nope. What, what if the Doctor changed his mind for a big finish set? Mm-hmm. Oh, you, mm-hmm. You've got the Max trilogy. Why not have the Christina trilogy? <laughs> I need a trilogy with the Candyman. And not like the creepy candy man from the eighth Doctor ones, but like the guy that's actually made out of candy who can be candy, stopped by pouring lemonade the on his candy feet. Man is made out of candy. He just looks creepy. Okay. Like he originally was intended to look like. Fair enough. So they did bring back the original candy man. They did, they did. I just I just wanted the guy that the seventh doctor ran into and the could stop guy, with like, the lemonade. It's the same character. What? Yeah, but the same design. Same voice. I, 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 I can't stop you there. I, 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 you, 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 I won it my way. You, you, you win. Which, which has to be the best way, hey, you right? you know how yeah. they're doing, like, okay, the War Doctor, the War Master, the War Valiard mm-hmm. now. The War Canine. The War yes. Candyman. The War Candyman. Oh my gosh. Just like sharpening a candy cane, like, yeah. And, and sticking if he it through you, a doll, you get removed heart. from time. You've got like, you know, candy grenades and. Oh we, my we, we need like who who needs a spin-off box set based on the robots of death? We need a spin-off box set based on the Happiness Patrol. 
Yeah. Yes. Please. Can we just have a spin-off based on, like, every story ever, though? I want an action figure set based off of every story ever, though. Like, not like B&M, like, you have to trek halfway across the country to barely find one of these sets. But, like, you know, like readily available, there's, like, four to ten action figures in each set. There's multiple sets from the story. You, basically, I want to be able to, like, create a scene-for-scene, shot-for-shot recreation of this story with action figures for, like, each story. So, uh, yeah. I just want insanely huge action they're, they're figure sets. they finish action figures now. That's another meta thing. Like... How, how incredible is that? Mm -hmm. Even though he looks but more Daleks. like Doom Coalition. Like, the thing is, they've basically just got a this new true. Dalek and just repainted it like blue and silver to be like, oh look, this Dalek was in the Dark Eyes box sets. And I'm like, really? Where? <laughs> I, I, do not, I do not remember a Dalek like that at all. Um, like... Seriously, like, and then, there's the like, time controller. Uh, I feel like Google, did you mean this? <laughs> like, is this what you were looking for? No? Oh, okay. Did you mean hipster Nymo? <laughs> <laughs> Just every time somebody talks about it. So, you know the Daleks? Ah, uh, no, but I'm sure you meant to say hipster Nymo. <laughs> the best <laughs> Doctor Who villain. Uh, the one, the only... What, what the man, man, the myths and legends. <laughs> myths and legends. <laughs> See what I did yes, there? Yes, <laughs> I did. <laughs> oh. Um. What, what do you the think Naimon, is... the myths and legends. There we go. No. Hipster oh, Jamaican yes. Naimon. The Na hipster... Naimon. Oh, well. The and uh, and the the hipster and I'm on is just like everything was better when I first experienced it. You know, <laughs> everything was better back in my day. Like Douglas Adams, you was only editor. <laughs> you only get the hipster and I'm on box set if you were cool enough to like kickstart it. You know, yeah, it's 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 not readily available. It's just like so. You know. So what would be contained in the hipster and I'm on box set? Like horns of Naimon. God All complex. the wonders of the galaxy. God complex. Um, Seasons of fear. Seasons of Is fear. Is there any other Nymon story in existence? Hold on, hold on. Tardis wiki, Alex. Absolutely. Just, it's just constantly open. Also, now I've spoiled the twist for Seasons of Fear again. I should stop doing that. People should go in blind like I did, because like when the Nymon appeared mm -hmm. in it, I was just like, oh my god. <laughs> I've not seen the horns of Nymon yet. Okay, so it would you would get PDF copies of Doctor Who magazine's Happy Death Day and the Professor, the Queen, and the Bookshop, right? As well as Titan Comics, Makes space sense. space and dimensions, relative and time, right? Uh, which is confusing. There would be the target novelization of the horns of Nymon. Uh, there would be the short story from Time Lord Fairy Tales of Jack and the Wormhole, and that would be it. The Vardens get more bloody love. The Vardens. This is true. Like you've... the tin foil people. <laughs> yeah, like they've 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 got okay. They've got a, they've got a story in the TV series. They've got a full on novel. They've got like plenty of audios. So like they've like got a comp oh, they've got a companion chronicle, right? Not gonna say which one, but I've listened to it. They've also got like a fourth Doctor adventure. It's just like this is why the Vardens get oh, more yeah. love. I bet they're gonna appear in the Time War as well, like the War Vardens. I so much wanted to see the Centaurans in the Time War. I think like, they're in. I the know Weird that they. Books, uh, 
they everything. that would be that's amazing Maybe. like they they weren't allowed initially but i can imagine the time lords just getting desperate enough that they're just like all right let him in have at the daleks you know yeah um what do you think of the war valley yard Oh boy! I mean, it was only a matter of time. Yeah. Um, hey, Doctor <laughs> Time War Three. The Valiard's in it, and he's dressed like the Doctor, and he's just an old Michael Jason. Oh, Jaston. my word! I'm that's that's just amazing. Mm -hmm. That really is. Like it was amazing when they had the Twelve played by Julia McKenzie. Like Miss Marple is the Eleven. <laughs> oh, wow! Mother of. Verity Lambert, that's awesome. <laughs> this is oh man. Do you want a do you want a, a big finish spin off series with John and Julian? A comic strip adaptations volume two T V action yep. comics. Please, those things are so hard to find. Yeah, like the the name of that like series i guess comic strip adaptations is so broad that they could just do that if they wanted to i guess mm -hmm. but i'm guessing their license is just dwm yeah i would assume that sort of like how the novel adaptations is, is like their license is just virgin why do we not have a spin-off series solely with frobisher because my big finished love stories but they don't love us we shall change their mind yeah like, like they've got the comic strip adaptations right mm -hmm. guess where frobisher came from dwm comics mm -hmm. get colin in that booth and get him to speak oh, to yes. a penguin <laughs> We need who, this. who do you want to voice Frobisher is the question. Get Michael Jazik back. Oh, right. From Holy Terror oh, and duh. Yeah. Maltese Penguin. Get him back in there. You got the guy who played Dog Bolter from Maltese Penguin back to play Dog Bolter in the monthly range. Dog Bolter is like the best thing because it's just so niche. Yeah, like beep the meep. <laughs> <laughs> they they decided to recast Beep the Meep because they thought eh, it's better to have a woman as Beep the Meep. Because Beep the Meep has such a high pitched voice, you might as well have a female voice playing him. And it works. Oh my god, it works. Beep the Meep, my goodness. Beep That's just... Meep. <laughs> Beep. <laughs> the best thing <laughs> I, I I've ever beep heard. Meep. Like, beep. The all high, the all high of all meeps. Like, <laughs> I love the idea of him because it's just like th this war criminal who's brutal and savage and will probably kill you and all your nearest and dearest is a cute, cuddly thing. Hmm. Like, I love Beep the Meep. I love him so much. Best villain. Dare I say better than the hipster Nymon. Well, um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> Have I... Uh, I'll give you a pass on that because... Beep the Meep. You know, be, <laughs> because cause I'm right. We we all occasionally say things that we don't mean. It's okay. I mean it. You'll just, you need to calm I mean down it. and... Have a thing, I, I, a I nice have. cup of tea. I've thought about it. You will, Beep the you will reconsider Beep this. The Meep is the best villain. Mm. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm hearing the hipster Nymon. You're just you're saying the same thing over and over again. Meep, which is that the hipster Nymon are the best thing ever. Meep, Meep. <laughs> hipster. Meep. Nymon. <laughs> Meep. Give me an eye. Give me a mom. Give, no, give me a meep. Give me another meep. <laughs> <laughs> what is this turned into? <sighs> uh, this is this is why <laughs> this is why you need to have guests in the show so that so we, this we is don't why we need to have you descend into this. Like, on, this is why you need to be in on every call. single recorded piece of media with 
because it's just like it just turns into we're cr- we're creative geniuses. Exactly. That's, that's the thing. You know, we f- forget about what Big Finish has planned for the rest of the year. Like we just I'd just rather not tune into our bank, podcast. What, my, my bank account probably does want to forget what they've got for the rest. Oh of the Oh my year. gosh. Like 2019. Oh, is it's like, like crazy. Like I got, I, I finally dabbled into the Fourth Doctor Adventures. They're so good. Like I went with this year's batch. Oh. And I think I'm up to like season four. Yes. See, season eight is what I started with. Oh. And it's very standalone oh. because it's just like it's just one companion. Mm. Like this, right. well, not just one companion. K9's there too. K9 Mark II's Come first on. ever adventures. So it's like important stories that needed to be told. Because, you know, everyone assumes, oh, Rybos Operation was first. No. Big Finish are here to invent your continuity. <laughs> Ooh. Like, I want a, a short trip where the Doctor, like, boxes up the K9 that he ends up sending to Sarah Jane. Yeah. How, how does he get, like, more K9s? How does Mark 2, <laughs> Mark 3, and Mark 4 happen? Well, apparently he, you know, this professor guy invented K9, which I love, and then the Doctor's like, oh, this is good, I'm going to make several versions of him. So, so not only, like, presumably the Doctor just sells them and makes money, so he can, like, probably pay for his TARDIS <laughs> MOTs, right? Um, and that he suddenly forgets about in Megopolis, but then remembers, oh wait, I I have made a lot of money. I need, I'll I'll just get someone to check my MOT. Like I'm pretty sure, right, that in one of the Tenth Doctor stories on Big Finish, mm-hmm. like he basically gets a TARDIS MOT or something like that. Like, y- yeah, he he basically gets a TARDIS MOT, it, and. Like if if he only did that in the Gopolis, really? then it, the like a third of the universe wouldn't have just ceased. Like so, so what, is, what is an MOT? Like it's wh- where you get your ch- car checked up, it gets his TARDIS checked up, you know. Oh, okay. You know. Ah, this is a okay. Mm. So yeah. Right. There are a lot of things where it's like, why did you not keep an extra fluid link on the TARDIS? What, why, why Why? do you not just buy a bunch of bat's milk all the time? Like, yeah. <laughs> like honestly, like, you could have had enough for you and Perry. Like, what if Aramam decided to stay on the TARDIS in the Cave of Rangazani and he only had, like, one, like, thing of bat's milk? And he's just like... He's, he's seeing like Perry and Aramem just dying on the floor and just like I have one enough for one no <laughs> what if that happened eh Who would... what, if, what if the fifth doctor had just been like you know what I don't want to die I'm taking this yeah. <laughs> he's the fifth doctor not the sixth doctor well yeah, not for long in that story <laughs> not, not like a few minutes <laughs> not for long <laughs> Uh, he's just like, you know, no change, my dear, <laughs> and a moment too soon. Yeah. Yep. I've, yep. I've just realized two companion chronicles are are basically oh. the the story set right before a Doctor regenerates. There's one in First Doctor Volume Two that's set right before Tenth Planet. Shock Horror is set right before Tenth Planet. It's almost as if it's the first Doctor Volume Two. What? Yeah, and then what? there's also Perry and the Piscon Paradox, which the first half of it is told from. Well, basically, uh, the fifth Doctor and Perry land in like 2009 and meet Perry. Oh. From 2009. Fifth okay. Doctor and Perry are at a point where their next adventure is Cave Sanjazani. Okay. And then, it, wow. and then it's explained future Perry huh. exists because the Time Lords are sort of bad at their job. Because <laughs> you know how Perry died in Trial of a Time Lord? Uh huh. And then. I do. And then wasn't dead? Mm hmm. 
because, you know, it had to have a happy ending. Reasons. So, so they brought her back to life because they were like, oh, she died. That's not good. But then another Time Lord came in and just was like, right, she's married to Brian Blessed. That's a fate worse than death. <laughs> so then we rejig time again. So there's like an infinite number of parries now because the Time Lords are just incompetent. Oh no. What? It's, at least it's not an infinite number of Tegans, let's face it. So, um, the there there aren't enough seats in the in, in the airport. They're just you couldn't fit them all. Yeah, that you know, forgot. I, I think everyone, Heathrow. There aren't enough seats in Heathrow. There, there, there aren't <laughs> enough Heathrows. Full stop. Mm, well, so here's my idea, right? The ultimate fitting in another big finish story. You know, at at the beginning of Time of the Ronnie. Oh no. Where the Seventh Doctor gets rolled over and he's in a wig and it is wearing the Sixth Doctor's jacket, yeah. right? What if that wasn't the first Seventh Doctor story, hmm? What if, much like Captain Jack, the Seventh Doctor had several seasons worth of adventures post-regeneration and prior to getting knocked out on the TARDIS console? What if there was something that made him go crazy so much so that he, he put on a blonde wig his old predecessor's outfit, and was just standing there when the the Ronnie's uh -huh, TARDIS hit into him. him. Who's just um, look? Mel, Mel's timeline is so ridiculous. It's not low. That's not a hindrance. It's not ridiculous. That's not a hindrance. It's very the the doctor met her before he met her. I forgot about that. That's a that. little ridiculous. <laughs> I forgot about that. In all honesty. <laughs> apart from that apart from that yes it's so, very linear this you know either he memory wipes her or he just gets rid of her Wouldn't goes a little her. bit crazy gets back you know it, it's it, i'm just seeing an opportunity there right i've got another idea what if they somehow set a story in between twin dilemma and attack of the cybermen hmm even though you can't, because <laughs> that mm -hmm. makes no sense. Like, first story in between him teleporting, I mean, <laughs> they can do anything they yeah. want. It's like, I'm going to freeze time, take you on an adventure, come back. Like, I mean, it's time travel. The Doctor can literally show up at any point for any of his companions, as long as he doesn't get noticed by his other self. He can just literally have him back in time even, a, a second even later. Even if he notices his other self, it doesn't matter. It's like it's not supposed I mean, to happen. They always meet each other at some point. Any time a TARDIS door closes, uh, you know, now that we're in a post Eccleston era of continuity, any time a TARDIS door closes, you can have years of adventures. Years. Uh, so, take that. Yeah, that's that's why the Doctor's age is so inconsistent. Yes. Yeah, somebody asked me on Twitter how that works with the sick Doctor saying he's 900 years old. And I'm like, it doesn't, it doesn't. This no, was no, just it, writers it, basically, it who are like... media, right, fix this before it was even a problem. They basically just went, okay, the Doctor just lost track and just started again. So, like, the Eighth Doctor's, like, three in his head. And then I be there surprised. were 900... I wouldn't be surprised if he actually thought he was three years old. I mean, his amnesia was kind of... Had amnesia so many times he <laughs> forgot his age. <laughs> These shoes. These shoes. They're, they're fabulous. Mm -hmm. Well, this has been incredible i feel like we've had a great creative yeah. session here we've solved doctor who's problems all of them by saying big not, finish, not even one by, by saying big finish insert stories here i don't care if it's impossible yep. you've done stuff like 
seriously, Big Finish have fit stories in the weirdest of places, like in between episodes of the Daleks' master plan. Mm -hmm. In between episodes of season three, that just link together, just full stop. Mm -hmm. Like in between cliffhangers, <laughs> just like fit stories Good. in between stories. Which, well, the thing is with Caves of Androzani and Fi and Planet of Fire, like there's room. There's certainly more room than, um, like the Dalek one and Planet of Fire, because. Planet of Fire just starts out with Turlough mm -hmm. saying, Oh, Tegan! Why? <laughs> and then mm. they just move on. <laughs> but that actually has... Uh, but Planet of Fire and Kejan Zani, actually, they don't link up. They just... Perry, Perry's wearing the same costume, but you don't just wear the same... You don't just wear whatever you're wearing once, do you? I know I oh, don't. Oh, I... I... I what I do is I order like uh, three hundred and sixty five copies of the same outfit. Totally. And once I've used one, you just you you pass it on to somebody else. Totally. You know. Totally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But um. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Well, but thematically, you, it works better for Caves of Androzani if there was like no time in between because, you know, this is someone yeah. the Doctor just met a few years ago. <laughs> I mean, here's here's my suggestion for Tegan, right? At the end of Resurrection of the Daleks, when she's like, I can't do this anymore. Goes off. They hear a knock on the door again. And it's just like, sorry, left my stuff in the TARDIS. Uh, but I am leaving. Doors close. TARDIS starts materializing again. She's like, no, nope, no, nope, don't you dare. And off they go. And we get like... had a story with Tegan in it like set after the Dalek one really yeah it's one of the Cybermen ones it's the one where Tegan looks a lot older on the cover oof well she does look a lot older because it's been like 20 years <laughs> I know I know it's just we talk candidly about these poor actors and it's like <laughs> <laughs> they're old and fat now it's she's like, not oh. fat. <laughs> no, no. She's that's, older. That's not at all. She's 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 was... twenty years older. No, but that's like a thing that you hear about bringing past doctors back, and I'm like, that's so ridiculous. Like, we can get past like it. What a superficial thing to say. Like, no, we can't bring back these doctors because they look older or they put on a little Paul weight. McGann and it's like, doesn't look older. You have no excuse. Well, exactly, no excuse, but Martha. also it's Why like... Why wasn't he the war doctor? Mm-hmm. Yep. yep. I mean, it's amazing the impression Nicholas Briggs does of the ninth doctor. Like, just get a, a, a stunt double and film over just, just, his shoulder. Just have Nicholas Briggs and do, like, a deep fake of Christopher Eccleston on him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Wow, just just make up some excuse. Like, I mean, the first Doctor, uh, his face constantly gets weird when other Doctors are around. Maybe it's like once every nine regenerations, your face just goes weird whenever you're in the presence of once other Once every nine selves. regenerations, so twice in a typical Time Lord's lifetime. Hey, I mean, the, it's it's as ridiculous as saying, well, you you're basically immortal except 12 times. You know, like, you you can live for hundreds and hundreds of years, but... but if, if you die if, 12 times, you die for real. It's only 12. You die for real with right. 13. Yeah. yeah. Lucky for some, not for us. <laughs> yes. It's like, for them back then, that wasn't short-sighted to include, but now it's like, uh-oh. <laughs> but now it's like Moffat got greedy. Hmm. <laughs> like... Well, I mean, to be fair, like... Russell T. Davies also got greedy with, like, the Tenth Doctor having, like, the shortest regeneration possible. We just all like to forget about that, but... Well, that he only existed for a few years. Right, right. Rule that Doctor did a terrible doctor job. Lies. He could just be lying about no. his age. That's the simplest explanation. Like, he... 
Like he did with <laughs> well, Pertwee certainly was. He did it with Romana, so there's no. Yeah, and then there was Pertwee going. Yeah, I'm several thousand years old. So ha. Huh. And then Big Finish has to be like, "Oh, sorry, we meant that as in like dog years." Yeah. <laughs> That was in Venusian dog years. Yep. See, we're solving all sorts of problems today. So, the master's timeline. Uh, He's completely simple. What are you talking about? I didn't do a four-part right, video series right. trying to so I've, I've got figure it all right. out. So Best regeneration was being killed by a rolling pin to the head. Right, here's, here's, here's my idea. Mm -hmm. the Roger Delgado incarnation isn't the final nor is the penultimate but he's like the 11th incarnation of the master not the 12th not the 13th mm. the 11th because and I'm guessing you're looking at a clock because you've got a yes you've got to go soon, mm -hmm. basically right because this is big finish related as well Right, mm -hmm. so we know he's not the final incarnation because he regenerates in a comic, right? Right. right. In a DWM right. comic. Doorway to hell. Yeah, it's a DWM con comic, so I'm fine with it being canon because mm -hmm. Titan Comics just. <sighs> Cyber Rassalon. Yeah. Mm. Also, Clara is the <laughs> Mona Lisa. Why not? Why so? I mean, Matt, Matt, Smith, Matt Smith should be the Mona Lisa because <laughs> he, had he no had, has no eyebrows. Uh, yeah, but anyway, um, mm -hmm. Back to the in master. the audio, Sympathy for the Devil, mm. it's an unbound audio, but it right. delivers a good point, the master does a regenerate into uh, Sam Kisgart, hmm, I wonder who that is, <laughs> possibly someone who wrote Nightshade, <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Um, but, yeah, the master regenerates. So, it's like, and I don't think he would be, I don't think the final incarnation of the master would be Mark Gatiss. <laughs> oh, I hope not. <laughs> He's a decent master. But he, oh, I'm sure. Yeah, he I'm is. Sure. He is. Um, but, I feel like it's reasonable to assume that the previous incarnation of the Master was Roger Delgado. Because it's mm. like, basically, it's the Third Doctor era happened without the Third Doctor. So basically, the world's gone to... The world's just been terrible. Mm. There's like a massive crater in London because, like... <laughs> yeah. That's where Adric's ship landed. <laughs> No, something to do with. <laughs> I think it's either to do with the Dalek story. No, no, actually, no. It's to do with invasion of the dinosaurs. They just look up to the sky and they hear, <laughs> "Now I'll never know if I was right." <laughs> <laughs> There's just a star-shaped crater in the ground. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, should we be worried about that? The dog is like, no, it's fine. Just keep moving, keep moving. Nothing to see here. It's just like they see in the TARDIS, just like, hmm, what's what? What's this like golden star? And the doctor's like, no, what golden star? I don't, I don't see, I don't see a badge from mathematical excellence. No, no, wait, it's a badge from no golden star here. Who said that? I didn't say that. Did you say that? Okay, Clara, moving Stop on. Stop talking rubbish. <laughs> If anybody mentions Adric again, I'll be. If anyone mentions Adric again, the you're joining him. <laughs> <laughs> everybody thinks the fifth Doctor was really nice, but it turns out he set everyone up. Everyone has a dark side. Like for mm. some people, it's playing chess with the universe. For some people, it's strangling their companion. For some people, it's just like kicking people onto a spaceship that's about to explode onto Earth. For others, it's constantly offering jelly babies. For others, Until... it's just having the doctor be sexist. <clears throat> Twice upon a time, first For... doctor. <clears throat> <clears throat> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also, yep. right, 
the King Maker is a brilliant audio. You'll love it because like the Doctor basically has a a book career. He's a he's a published author on a galactic oh, wow. scale. That's why there's like a Target novel on the front cover. Uh, there we go. <laughs> but he's Thanks not for writing. Clearing that up. He's not like writing Target novelizations. He's writing educational books. It started oh, when wow. people people realized, hmm. The Loch Ness Monster's real. I wonder what's to do with that. Because Terror of the Zygons right. happen. And yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's a bunch of stuff that happens, like... Um, heck, the Ninth Doctor's even mentioned in it. Also, really? John Colshaw provides a cameo as the Fourth Doctor. Oh, boy. And also, Perry and Aramem pose as the... Princes locked up in the tower because it's about Richard the Third. They pose as the two princes for a year and a half. Wow! Like a full year and a half. Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah, yeah. The Doctor only knew Perry for about a few years in between. Only just met a few years ago. <laughs> <laughs> wow that's that's it's insane what will they do next <laughs> probably more stuff with Adric like cause they've been doing a lot of stuff with like season 19 TARDIS team recently and when I say mm -hmm. recently I mean for Adric the past few years cause like season 18 will be the setting for the next uh one of the Fort Doctor Adventures yeah, that'll be, seasons. That'll be exciting. Yeah. More Fort Doctor and Adric when they actually got along, you know? Yeah. You know, I actually think there should be like Fourth Doctor Adventures set between Warriors Gate and Keeper of Traken. Or even Keeper of Traken and Legopolis. Because mm. that could work. You can have Fourth Doctor and Adric I mean, stories like on their own. The they shut the TARDIS door at least once. So, yeah. <laughs> That's so real. If they shut the TARDIS doors, infinite yeah. adventures. So, basically... Yes. That's what you have to accept the if you to accept the Ninth Doctor's continuity. They do a trilogy where the Doctor travels with, like, Herbert from Time Lash. <laughs> <laughs> You've got the Max trilogy. What about the Herbert trilogy? <laughs> we must speak up for these gems. The underused yeah, gems you know what of the I universe. want for a series of Fourth Doctor adventures, which will be a little difficult because you need Lala Ward and she's sort of living in Hong Kong. Hmm, really? Yeah. You, so, <laughs> basically, my idea, right? You've got the Fourth Doctor, you've got Romana 2, you've got K9, and you've also got Duggan. Mm -hmm. Done. That's the pitch. That's a great pitch. Just add Duggan. Duggan. He's like he should be a companion. Duggan. Just have he have a Frobisher trilogy and have a series of Fourth Doctor adventures where he's with Duggan. <sighs> mm-hmm. There we go. And that's yep. and, and I guess we should wrap it up now. That sounds like a brilliant note. Yeah. <laughs> Other than hipster Naimon, we cannot top so that. So <laughs> if anyone's still listening. Thank and you're not us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But thank you so much. Um, I, I've, yes. Um, I've got to thank Danny for also agreeing mm -hmm. to do this, but also thank you, Alex, for being a joy to <laughs> speak with. Thank, thank you so much for having me and uh, vibing with my crazy ideas. Yeah, thank you for <laughs> vibing with some of mine. Not all it's of been, them. It's been a pleasure. Because I am, yes. I am warped. <laughs> I am a warped soul. But yeah. And and you like beat the meat better than Hipster Nylon. Yes. But we, we, none, nobody's perfect. You know? <laughs> oh, thank you for having me. Yeah. So, uh, I guess well, thanks everyone who is listening. Thanks, thanks all two and a half people that are listening right now. And... I guess. See you guys next time.
time I do a thing on this channel? Question mark? Right. But, but, but by every listener.